Yeah. All right, guys, it's Cleveland Motor Podcast, episode number 457. Light them up, boys. And I'll just do the obligatory. Oh, oh Sleepy got a good out again. Yeah, that, uh, he was a little excited. <laughs> it was a fucking effervescent out right there. Yeah. Ooh. Wow. That was solid. Uh, to my immediate left with a mouthful of, you're, you're drinking rye tonight, right? Yeah, Sazerac. Sazerac. Sazerac Dan Kropke. Sazerac. <laughs> Tabernak. Sazerac. Seva. Um, and to his left. Uh, Steve Sleepy. And to his left. John. And behind the bar. Tom Pennington. Look at that. It's the five of us. Yep. It's so intimate. Yep. It's so... What I just wanted to say, the hits keep on coming from our podcast listeners, our Patreon members. We're going to read some really fun email from Patreons later on. Um, we love you. I'm going to get this out of the way right now. We love you. Date. We got a new Patreon member named Dave Matheson. He is lighting the world on fire mm -hmm. with his contributions that he's made to uh, our Patreon. Some, some great stuff. I sent him a Tanuki. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, mm -hmm. nice. Mm -hmm. nice. That, that good. That good. That good. I sent him a fucking Tanuki. Um, he's got some problems with the Honda Dream that we're going to help him work out. Um, okay. Super, super good listener and, and a loyal listener, too. I, Goes I, way back. I feel like Ooh. at the he's on fire thing, we should have lit the. Uh, on fire. I finally got the fuel. You did get the fuel? Did you get the fuel? <laughs> is there fuel in it, Tom? There is no fuel in it, but I believe. Where's the, the fuel? Right there in front of you, the, two liter, the one liter bottle. Oh, I we're going to make fire. That is what we were supposed to get. Go just ahead and just oh, be. Let's do this. Let's, let's just go ahead and be sloppy about slosh how you it, pour it. Slosh it. Except our, be sloppy about how except you pour that. Except our fireman in. actually isn't here this time. Oh, it's got a seal. Oh, that's right. We don't have a fireman don't have here. Fireman, oh, yeah. fireman Pete is not here tonight. That's the day oh, we decide to do perfect. this. this fireman is fucking, Pete is not here, and we're making I, fire. This is bad. I don't know how much to put in there. I have no idea. This is what they sent me for. for yeah, is there instructions? Fuel? Is there any kind of a... So this is not the recommended item. Uh, okay. This is not bioethanol. It's gasoline. So this is paraffin lamp oil, which is kerosene based. Oh, so the other know. thing that's sitting oh. there is a sterno. That's is, a sterno. Is a sterno we know all about sternos. All right. <laughs> so, uh, oh, well, we're all gonna die here. Oh, that's oh yeah, so you're nice. splashing in everything. Yeah, just splash it. Get oh, that on the oh, mixing yeah. board. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anybody want to stick their finger in there? Wait, light, aren't, aren't you supposed to fill it? Light the whole oh, bar on fire. Burn all night here. Right. Well, if you don't fill it, won't the fire? Won't the element just burn up? Oh, God. Okay. Yeah, stand back. Yay. All right, there you go. Nice. Gentle flame. Oh. It's turn, a crackle cast. Boom. Turn the house lights down. <laughs> turn the house lights <laughs> down. Yes, and if you're and if you're active. at home, set your settings for romantic. Who, yeah, uh, right. Who was which which? Oh, she's this? she's effervescent, isn't that she? <laughs> oh, okay. Is excitable. Oh Ooh. shit! Oh shit! We'll yeah. see if she breaks the glass. I uh, hope not. Do yeah. you have a fire de smoker detector Aaron, down here? I don't think so. Okay, good. Yeah. I don't know. We we, we <laughs> it's gotta, adding some. Talk to my landlord. We waived that. the we waved the home inspection. So <laughs> yeah. High. Oh, that is that is going. Do you have a Do you have anything long in? Uh, Just in case. You have anything long? Well, don't answer. Oh, that's yeah. it. Just yeah. Do you have anything long and stick shaped? No, you see, it keeps burning my hand. Oh yeah, wasn't there like a stick in there or something? Yeah. Or something? Yeah. Hold on. That's the snuffer. That's that's. Yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. That's the tamper. Oh, you want to put it all the way? Oh, in. oh God! Now there's smoke. There's smoke everywhere. That'll probably light it back on fire. <laughs> Quick, light that fucking thing. Give me that thing. Give me that thing. Oh, oh dude. No. Oh man. Chaos. Chaos. Anarchy. Dogs and cats living together. All right, there you go. Light it up, Tom. Light it again, light it again. Make fire. Did you take Make the fire. batteries out of the smoke detector at least? There you go. That's better. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> yeah, it's warm. It was just on fire. <laughs> Yeah, that's the way fire it works. The, uh, it makes shit hot until it disappears. Well, okay, that was better when you pushed it down. That's why I tamped bit. it down a little uh, bit. Uh, yeah. Do we do we remember which podcast, which which listener was that? Or I can't at this moment. I just can't. But but realistically, I'm very happy with it. It's oh, very yeah. it's very romantic. It's it's adding a lot to the ambiance of our podcast. And if it gets ugly, we'll just tamp it out. Right. We also have a Moto Go candle that they gave us that smells like. Oil, burning oil. Mm -hmm. so that's always good. Oh, so it smells like the back of the shop. <laughs> Sorry, dude. I've been in the fucking Middle East. I don't want to smell that. Yeah. So that was my greeting. Hey, welcome to Desert Storm. We're burning everything. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Place looked good for like three days, and then the sky went away. <laughs> yeah. Then then they turned off the sun like, by hey, burning all the oil. Come over here by this pit. No, no. This was just. Oh God. This was just all the oil oh, companies. Yeah. 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 
had got their valves opened up and, and turned to fire. Yeah. And Red Adair was nowhere to be found to turn them off. Mm. That's, a, that's a history line for people who know their history. <laughs> um, but, but long and short of it is, it went from being my first couple of days, I was like, this is the desert. It's beautiful. It's amazing. And then all of a sudden, literally, they turned off the sun uh. by burning millions of gallons of raw oil out of the ground uh. and just huge towers of flames. And, uh, and then, then I went home because the battle was over and I didn't get to do anything. I just got to be like in my tank. So anyway, back to fun stuff. Uh, yeah, yay, that's a podcast listener. Uh, so we are, in, as far as I'm concerned, we are blessed. We did start the fire. We did? We did. <laughs> it's all, it's still been burning since the world's been turning. Uh, we, we were blessed by a, apparently a false spring. Yep. Yeah. That was turned into a fool's spring. And now we're celebrating pre-St. Patty's Day, apparently. Mm-hmm. Um, that the, yep. the drinking light has been lit for anybody who likes to celebrate St. Patty's yeah, Day. Bacon is on. And, uh, right, to, to gear up to Cleveland's official launch of spring. I, I, rode, I rode to my eye appointment yesterday. Oh, you did? Yeah. 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 I like, I've been riding all kinds of bikes at the shop. I like how they're trying to push St. Patrick's Day to uh, St. Patrick's Day Eve now because it's landing on a Sunday. Yeah, mm. yeah. yeah. So they're trying to they're trying to push the. Hey, and that's why like everybody's going to have the St. Patrick's Day virus on Monday, right? When when, when nothing is going to happen in Cleveland, right? right. But that's, you know what St. Patrick's Day Eve actually is is Moto Goes fundraiser. It is. Yep. Which, thanks to our listeners, is one hundred percent sold out. Nice. Excellent. And that is a big deal. I, I, I'm sure Brian would be very proud of that. I got the message today that the sixth annual benefit for bringing back shop class, Saturday, March 16th at 6 p.m. is fucking 100% sold out. Bravo. Now, man. to our listeners at home who want either a curiously odd, is that a CB450? A CM400, a yeah. CM400 uh, Auto Tragic? Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Or a Harley Davidson. Yeah. Take your pick. Um, I'll take the CM400. Right, right. They are, there are still tickets available for those raffle bikes. I bought a ticket in a moment of weakness. Oh, you did? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for the 450. I you bought the ticket for? The 450. Oh, you bought a ticket for the auto auto tragic. Yeah. Oh, nice. I'm gonna well, get I had my sister who's two years younger than me uh, get a hold of me talking like she wants to get a motorcycle. Oh, and, and that like, was literally, how much was the ticket? Like 25 or 50 yeah. bucks. So or, you're willing to invest $25 in your sister <laughs> having no, 50 a bucks. terrible motorcycle experience. It was 50 well, for I think that the one. Harley's because the Harley's 50. 100. No, the, Har- 100 to Har- oh, okay. the Harley's 100. I, and I, the, mean, I made one of those run and it ran pretty good. And it wasn't, I mean. He said they've only sold 25 tickets for <gasps> the Honda. Fuck. That's a one in 25 chance. That's amazing. Hmm. That's amazing. So, that that is amazing. So one in twenty five chance of owning a motorcycle that I <laughs> would not drive to your house to pick up. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? If you need service on that bike, I'm still going to oh, charge you right. one fifty to pick it up. You're right. It's a it's a hundred dollars limit. One hundred and fifty tickets for the Harley. For the Harley. And then the CM four fifty Hondamatic motorcycle package is fifty apiece. Motorcycle package. There's a package. There's a package. I motorcycle, think you get like three frames and two extra motors. And well, yeah, that's part of this. Whoa! It says, uh, well, winter, you got to fix it first. Ah. <laughs> well, here's the trick. Winner will receive the motorcycle with title. Okay, that's pretty it includes solid. Includes a three month membership to Skidmark. Okay, to fix and your includes shit. One free class from Noble. So they teach you how to fix it. That's a pretty good value. That's a good deal. I mean, that's, I should, that's, I should at least buy one ticket just on the opportunity that I could have Steve I mean, show me how to fix a motorcycle. That would be beautiful. <laughs> Even if the bike wasn't included, it would still be a that's, pretty good that's deal. That's a good deal. I would absolutely go to Steve's Harley Davidson class, or I would absolutely go to Steve's carburetor class. Yeah. Because I taught that fucking seminar at Mid-Ohio, the carburetor seminar, for years. I mean, for years... The people that were running the event could just be like, Phil, somebody no-showed. Can you do your carburetor seminar? <laughs> yes, I can do my carburetor seminar. I had a tight 35-minute, 40-minute carburetor seminar that was just like, because Tom will tell you now that he's worked at the shop for a year, I give the carburetor, carburetor seminar about 14 times a week. Yep. Mm-hmm. 
It's a solid 14 times a week. But then you got it down to about 30 seconds. Now you're like, don't buy a bike with a carburetor. That's, yeah, no. um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's usually how it starts. And if they give me any pushback whatsoever, oh, okay, great. Yeah. You put your nickel in the jukebox, <laughs> stand back. I b- I'd probably learn at least something. There'd be something. I absolutely guarantee every time I've ever taken a class, even classes I've taken uh-huh. multiple times, like when we took our concealed carry class, mm-hmm. I could teach the concealed carry class. I'm a former police officer. Uh, when John and I and Dustin took the concealed carry class together, I still learn shit. Mm-hmm. You always learn stuff. If I if you take the motorcycle safety foundation course three times in ten years, I guarantee you're going to learn some shit. Right. And right. the weird part is, is, even like if you if you are the impossible person, you've mastered whatever we're talking right. about. Yeah. You can still learn something from somebody that's not as good as you. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's yeah. always something to learn from people. The old man at the shop today told me, well, you know, uh, at uh, XYZ Hardware Store, the biggest hardware store in Cleveland that did all the all the uh, John Deere lawn machines and all the uh, uh, Troy built snow throwers, I was their chief mechanic. Exactly. And I said, really? Wow. And he goes, yeah, I got this Honda VT500. And I said, did you fog it? And he goes, what's that? And I said, you can't come in here and tell me you were the chief mechanic (laughs) at the biggest snowblower slash lawn tractor dealership in Cleveland. And when I say, did you fog it? You tell me you don't know what that is. Mm -hmm. Your credentials are all now suspect. Yep. (laughs) Everything you say from now on will be viewed with a jaundiced eye. Because if I say, did you fog it? He's like, what do you mean fog it? I went, what do you think I fucking meant? Fog it. We're talking about putting something into bed for a long period of time. I'm just going to let you, what do they say? There's two types of people in this world. Those can, who can extrapolate information from incomplete data and. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's good. So, so when we are, when we're talking about what <laughs> Cleveland's going through right now, we have got this crazy situation thanks to global goddamn warming or climate change, if you don't like those terms. I have ridden my motorcycle a lot. I've ridden other people's motorcycles a lot. I have had more joy riding bikes on indiscriminate 50 and 60 degree days this fucking winter. Now, not great for the old season pass. No. At the snow place. They've closed the ski places around here. They have. They've officially, yeah. Boston Mills and Brandywine both just said, fuck it, we're out. Yep. I think they're open for a total of 18 days. I think you're right. Something they're, like some fucking terrible they're, man. Yeah. Next week, they're opening their BMW course, or BMX course. <laughs> <laughs> Downhill mountain bikes. Downhill mountain biking. <laughs> well, that was a place yeah, Clear, Clear Fork had a, you know, they for a minute, they had an you know an off-road park, and you it got, was great. You got to make some money. But... Yeah. It, hey, speaking that of that, that thing that you oh. sent, I've been finding more and more stuff out about it. Now, you, you mean the golf called? course? Yeah. Elec- electric. Tell electric. the people about this. Well, John found cool. it. You read the article, right? I mean, I read some of it. Oh, I'm, I mean, I'm on their Instagram page now. Okay, yeah. No, I found like <laughs> yeah, videos, yeah, yeah. and they have a bunch of videos on YouTube already of them ripping the place and stuff. It's mm-hmm. pretty cool. But so, that, so some kids bought, I don't know if they're kids or not, but I'm calling them kids. <laughs> but some, dudes. Some dudes bought an old golf course. And they were going to turn it into a dirt bike track, but everybody around there was like, no, you're not. We don't want the noise. And they said, okay, I mean, we meant electric dirt bike track. And so now they have all the sun runs and all that. They're going to rent them. Sir so runs. you don't, sir runs, so yeah. you don't have to spend $6,000 on a bike. You're That's only right. going to ride twice. Right. You can go spend a hundred bucks or something for the day. I think it was seventy five bucks for two hours. Yeah, so it's not too bad. Wow. So this is really nearby. I think New Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So it's like an hour from us, maybe a little less or more. Right like, about an hour. There's two things amazing about that concept. One is I don't have to own a Suron. Mm-hmm. Right. That's the point. Yeah. The other you is get all I don't Suron. have to own a Suron. Yep. And, but the thing and is, and when I break a Suron, it's not my fucking problem. Nope. And you can get it all the Suron out of your system. Right. For I think it's amazing, bucks. dude. So Here. if you have your own electric dirt bike, will, now, they, will they let you ride it? Yeah, you they can. have what's called a membership. So I don't yeah. know what that's all about. Okay, like, I'm so. I'm here on their website. I thought they might have had some Starks there too. I, I saw a picture. I saw a video of one Stark running around at least. For yeah, sure. I'm sure. Which is I know they had better. electric. Also had electric mountain bikes too. Mm. Uh, the, these all of these things sound fun. Yeah. 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 And pretty noiseless. Our friends, uh, Greg Castillo and uh, the other of the Skidmark Posse, the mini bike, Skidmark Mini Bike Posse, mm-hmm. Dave Nolan and uh, John and uh, 
Greg and whatnot, they were all, they found a disused golf course very close to us over on the east side, I believe. And I believe that without any permission of any ownership whatsoever, they were just sort of <laughs> reconnoir- like reconnoitering the place. I didn't see any no trespassing signs, right. so it must be okay. Yeah, well, okay. Here, here you go. So you got a Sure on Light B. Okay. Yep. Uh, two hours, $75 rental. Uh-huh. Uh, do, 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 election motion E pure, which is more of a trials bike. Yeah. They had an uh, E trials bike. Yeah. E trials. 100, 140 for two hours. Okay. Yeah. Sure are 125 for four hours. Okay. Motion E pure. And then they have mountain bikes. They actually do have mountain bikes. That's pretty cool. So it's all, I mean, it's, it looks pretty cool. It's a E L E C T R E K Valley. Yeah, electric, electric valley, electric valley, electric valley. Yep. Okay. Well, that's pretty uh, cool. Trick. Yeah, well, I get it. yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. We're gonna rock on down to electric <laughs> valley. I believe that. It, and I think that if they're open, you know, five days a week. Oh yeah. And you show up on a Monday. Yeah. With the boys from the Cleveland podcast, we could probably mean shotguns and turn it into a ski event too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just, you got all that square footage. You got all that real estate. You Seems know? like it'd be a shame if you didn't bust some birds. Yeah. Phil- <laughs> Philadelphia, Ohio. Yeah, New Philly. New Philly. New Philly. New Philadelphia. Yeah. Okay. And, yeah, I, and I right around there. So that's where, where are we going? That Well, we used to, in New Philly, that's where we go to rip. Those roads are fucking mm. dope. The 555 starts right oh, down. Triple around nickels there right stuff there. And, yeah. Oh, man. That's where Mark killed his. He Remember Mark Lepresto bought this actual super bike yeah. for like $80,000? And it would only start with a laptop, and the fuel was twenty five dollars a gallon. Oh, ouch! Well, he went down there, and we we all went. We trailer down, and then we start riding in New Philly. And you trailer down to go ride the triple nickel? Well, yeah, because we weren't cut, like most of the time just in case. Like it wasn't hmm. it wasn't more or less because it was in your bike might not be coming back. Yeah, so we were down there riding, and like usually I'd be in which group- are road legal operational functional streets. And state mm, routes at the time. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. They. Oh, I thought you yeah. meant the bikes, but yeah, the, the bikes were yeah. barely road legal. I, I'm not bike. doubting that. Yeah, <laughs> but but so especially Marks because Marks was an actual fucking super bike. Yeah, and so he had all the loans on it, all the yeah. things through a credit union. Oh. And so that day, this dude, do you remember Woody Deathridge? He used yes, to I ride for Woody. Suzuki. Yep. So he came with the pack of guys down there to rip these roads, mm-hmm. and so now I I immediately made myself C pack. Yeah, because I like now Woody and whoever was going to be a yeah the B guys were probably going to ride faster than they ever did because oh, yeah, those yeah, yeah, guys sure. were going to be right. ripping. So I was like, I'm staying the fuck back. Oh no, you need to be so far back that the helicopter gets to the crash site before, <laughs> before you, do. you do right. <laughs> so, but this was the time when we still all wore all full leathers and yeah. everything, and so we're ripping. I mean, I'm at a pace that I'm like, wow, this is pushing my like. Were you I, in a CBR 900 or yeah 900 RR? Yeah. No, I had my ZX7 on this ride, so it was a okay. ZX7 RR. Yeah. At the time, so I was I was, I was pushing it hard and, and I was getting knees down. It was great, but I was nowhere near the guys no, in front of us. Like that's how good they were, right? So as we're coming, like I'm going, I start to see red. Yeah, you just start to see red, and then I see Mark walking through like grass toward like something oh. further out. He low sided, and he said it, he, when he when he started talking about it, he said it was great because it was just sliding. Yeah. Then it hit a tuft of grass, and it was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but fortunately for him. He was able to part the entire thing out, so the wheels didn't get fucked up. So oh. the Marchese, whatever yeah, Marchese, magnesium, yeah, or Marchese whatever, yeah. magnesium wheels. Yeah. He was able to get like five grand for those. The forks he sold for oh. twenty thousand oh. dollars. Oh, and stuff. Wow. So he ended up parting the whole fucking thing out, and then he moved. Barely to Texas. an inconvenience. Yeah, right. But credit man, score. That, ding 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 ding. Anyways, to answer your thing, ding, ding, that's New Philly. It's a really fun place. <laughs> well, triple nickel. Right? Yeah. And we all, I mean, we go down and we ride the triple nickel. You know, if you're doing a Zanesville thing or whatever, mm-hmm. like it's a great, it's a fun road to ride. It's Ohio's version of the dragon. Uh, you know, the and dragon, honestly, not that bad. I mean, like it's there's some good. It's a very good road. Thirty five, forty degree banked, crazy yeah, fucking it's blind an turns. Extremely good road to ride. Yeah. Unfortunately, just like the dragon, local law enforcement has been notified mm-hmm. to its attractiveness to motorcycle idiots. Mm-hmm. And so every time I've ridden triple nickel, probably the past 20 years, there's always been like this perfect pacing of like a cop every three miles. Oh, yeah. Just to slow people down. And I'm like, oh, that's not an accident. But that's like on a Saturday or right. Sunday. That's on we Saturday. have to go like yeah. on a Tuesday. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You but then you Tuesday, also you don't see anybody. You also risk the locals on a Tuesday though. I remember leaned over 
on my Z900RS, like thinking I'm the man, yeah. and I got passed by a dude with his wife on a fucking gold wing <laughs> with no helmets on. Came on. I think he was drinking a beer. Probably. Came on. <laughs> <laughs> he was, he was. I, was, I was out in California on the Kernwood Canyon Road or whatever. And I'm like, ooh, wow, this is fun. I'm going on everything. And what were you on? What were you riding? Uh, I was riding Kevin's FC09. Yeah, FC09. You know? Oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'm like, wow, you know, this is starting to feel really good. And I feel yeah. like I'm flying along. And I look in my rear view mirror, and there's like a clapped out Ford Explorer. <laughs> like, dude, will you fucking pull over? Dude, like, yeah, <laughs> and one of the wheels is like, wobbly, wobbly, wobbly. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, but, but. I pulled over and let him pass. <laughs> yeah, but dude, when we go down to the Blue Ridge Mountains, those fucking clapped out Ford Explorers have also oh, been riding man. those roads for yeah. 51 well, years. I get it. Dude, yeah. I, like, I grew yeah. I grew up in that area. That's, you know, that's Kernville Canyon Road. Exactly. Yeah. You know, you get out in the middle of West Virginia, there is nothing but you and a dude in a beat up Ford F100 chasing you down. I can take you to Pennsylvania and somewhere where I grew up and yeah. I'll make you scared. There you right, go. exactly. You'll your pants. Hey, there's always that game. And if that doesn't work, my brother, who was a UPS driver driving right. a brown truck on those roads <laughs> for fucking 30 <laughs> years, will really make there you, you piss your pants. Yeah. Quarter panel to quarter panel yeah. in a oh, UPS truck. I, he used yeah. to take me on hell rides and I'd fire up a b- blaze one up. Yeah. You know, and then just be like, <laughs> he's just like, ah, I'm like okay. holding on to dear life. And At you're just night, like, this is a UPS truck. Yeah. Yep. It is built to last 200 million miles. Yep. It is not meant to corner. Uh-uh. No. Uh, if you were riding in the truck with it, like he had driver, like so the Christmas helpers and yeah, stuff always, that, yeah. that fucked off on the first day. They're yeah. like, I- I'm not doing this. No, my I'm life's not, worth more than that. Like this guy's like on two wheels half the time. <laughs> God bless him. Uh, I always forget when I go skiing up in western New York that they get a lot of snow compared to our moderate amount of snow. Yeah. And I love it when I'm up there. And, you know, this is most of this place is on a Native American reservation, like or adjacent to a Native American reservation. And I get up there and the UPS trucks are Ford F-250 full-time <laughs> four-wheel drive yeah. with a box on the back. And that's what they are. Yeah. And you're like, oh, oh. This is it's and it's not far from here. It's four hours, right? right? And yet it is a completely different dynamic up there. Mm-hmm. Those are the snow people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and California has their snow people too. They've had right. a very rough week. Yep. Uh, they've had they've had some my, tough. My favorite tough thing was watching the Weather Channel and they're live at the Donner Pass. Yes. This thing closed for three <laughs> yes. days. I'm like, wow. <laughs> yeah, you know the the one guy said, you know what? When you see a sign that says pull in now and put on your chains, yep. don't drive past it. Yeah, yep. right. And then Clearly, 700 truckers drove past it. Well, yep. and the lady that was like one hour from giving birth that got oh, really? stuck, and then oh, they, they had to drive in there and then give birth to the lady and then drive her out. Oh, like that. man. Like, you got to be a fucking moron to be like, well, I'm, I, it might be today, it might not, but let's go ahead and do the pass. Yeah. Donner, party of six. Yeah, Donner, right. party of six. I yeah. just saw a woman yeah. pulling a baby out in the passenger seat of the car. I don't know if my wife sent it to me. Or yeah. My wife it, sent it to me. I don't know if it was that I, or not. What I promise you is. That that's one of those places where when uh, Dr. Waters and I, we, I, I fucked off West. So I'd fucked off West at one point to sell a bunch of bikes and weird things happened. The bikes didn't end up selling and they got hijacked and whatever and held hostage, but I had to bring them back. So in order to bring them back, I had to buy a truck. So I bought a truck in San Diego and I bought a Toyota Tundra that had been only rolled over once and twice. Not the odometer had been rolled over. The actual entire truck had been rolled over. Hmm. And so the roof line, the A pillar, the B pillar, and all the baby pillars were all bondoed up and painted with some, you know, it was called the poop-colored tundra for a reason. But it was a good running truck, and it had a a healthy V8 in it. Hmm. And so I used that to reacquire my trailer and reestablish my mission from a year prior and sell off all the bikes. But Dr. Waters, in a moment of stunning brilliance and bad decision-making, decided she was going to fly out to San Diego. I was going to pick her up, and we were going to drive back across America together and have a beautiful romantic trip across America. Mm -hmm. And when we were driving across Donner Pass, it was October-ish, okay? And I had uh, California tires on the vehicle, which are, they look really knobby. They're big and they look trucky and they look like those are good, good tires, Mm. but they're California tires. So they are uh, polished is the nicest way to say it. (laughs) And so even when we got to Palm Springs in, you know, Palm Springs at ground level is like 80 degrees. Mm. But when you start getting elevation in Palm Springs, you discover that snow happens pretty fast in October. 
And when we were going down her pass, it literally said, you know, snow warning ahead kind of thing. And Merritt's like, well, you know, Phil's a good driver. <laughs> Two-wheel drive truck. We're probably okay. Yeah. And we went up a hill and we came back down the hill backwards and sideways. Oh, boy. And Merritt was like, we need tires. <laughs> and I was like, we need brakes, too. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> it was fucking ugly. And we changed the brakes in Flagstaff in a three-foot blizzard. Nice. It was pretty ugly. It was pretty ugly. On uh, that one, yeah, that was pretty solid. But they don't fuck around up there. Nope. Like, they do not fuck around. It is one of those places that when somebody says, oh, there's going to be big snow coming this weekend, you don't go there. Well, there's also, so my my, <laughs> my ex-wife's boyfriend, ex-boyfriend that's still my buddy. Yeah. <laughs> now. Um, Very Canadian of you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What am I going to do, right? But so he lives in Denver or whatever. No, yeah, what, by Breckenridge and all that yeah, shit. yeah. yeah. There's roads over there where, like, literally the sign says, like, what you're saying, yeah. like, stop, put your t- snow chains yeah. on. If if you get beyond this point, there's nothing we can do. No, yep. Shrine Pass, that like, whole that whole exit, that whole thing. When yeah. we did, when we did the cross country on the Mad Ass in early October, right, and we went up there, there were two feet of snow, and there was two feet of snow, and they were like, we're about to close the exit, and I thought. We can't get stuck up here right. on a fucking 125 motorcycle if they close the gates on the exit. So we did a, you know, exit stage left even. Mm-hmm. We got the fuck out of there. And we did get the fuck out of there because they closed the road right behind us. And you're not living until you're riding a 125cc motorcycle in snow. <laughs> right? And not on Kanabi tires like these are the bullshit IRCs that came with it from the factory that are very, like, I'm a sport bike. Um, bullshit tires. It was, it was sketch as fuck. I'm but sure. we had to get the photo shoot, so. You know. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> you got to go up there, man. Yeah, you just got to go. You, you can't you not You should have brought that. skis, because, like, that doesn't should've have a center skis. section. Motherfucker. And then you could have just, you know, done the, the European we ski. We didn't and- even bring cold weather gear. <laughs> we were supposed to be taking that route back across 40 oh, that's right, through right, Texas right, yeah, yeah, yeah. where it was like 75 goddamn degrees. Mm. We we're like, let's go to Denver. We know people there. So really? we went 80. So we went the Northern route instead. And that was okay. It was a mistake, but it was a lot of fun. Right. It was still technically a mistake, but it was still a lot of fun. Right. You made the best. Out of it. Sometimes true. mistakes Again, any bike can be an adventure bike if it's inappropriate. Enough. Sometimes mistakes grow up to be a wonderful human being and run shit plants. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> so anyway, uh, one of the one of the fucking the joys of my week was that uh, we've had this Honda VT11. I'm sad that Grumpy Sewer Guy's not here because this is honestly one of his patron saints of motorcycles. Um, <laughs> We, we've had this 2000 uh, Honda VT 1100 Shadow in the shop that showed up running on one lung, right? And it was very unhappy bike. But 39,000 miles, and honestly, tip to tail, nothing fucking wrong with it. Hmm. Like, it hasn't been crashed and the handlebars are bent. It hasn't been rusted out. It's honestly a decent, good Ohio bike that lived in a garage its whole life. Hmm. It had brand new tires put on it probably 10 years ago oh. and uh but they're nice they have grooves they have deep spots and i'm not just happy if they're not the originals right exactly <laughs> <laughs> yeah no shit and so one of tom's missions over the winter was hey if you get a minute could you see if this thing could possibly wake up the second cylinder? Because I did the job that I'm supposed to do. I put gasoline in it. I put a brand new battery in it. I started it up. I revved it to all of it can do. And the second cylinder never woke up. It just was in permanent hibernation. This comes to our tech tip for today's podcast. Hmm. Because there are no less than 93 million of these VT1100 shadows out there in the world. They're made in Ohio. That's pretty cool. Hmm. In a time, in a world where most of the Honda motorcycles are made in Thailand, the Honda VT 1100 Shadow was made in Marysville, Ohio by Americans. They're really good bikes. They're shaft drive and they're kind of amazing. And Hofford has always said it's absolutely one of his favorite motorcycles going back forever. Tom, why was this motorcycle only delivering power on ein Zylinder? So at the end of the day, the CVs, CV uh, diaphragms. Carburetors. 
are really were really really old and really really cracked. Mm-hmm. And the problem is new if you can find them. They're several hundreds of dollars. And after a little bit of digging, because um, this thing is, what do you say, 20 years old now? It's at a, least. It's 24 years 24 old. 24 years this old. This year. Yeah. So after a little bit of digging, I found a guy in Ohio, of all places, that sells CV diaphragms for replacement slides. Do they slide also cards. sell the slides with the diaphragms nope, or just nope, the diaphragms? This is just the diaphragm. Okay. Now, this is going to be important to people who own motorcycles. Mm-hmm. What have CV carbs, which is uh-huh. just about all of them after 1981. Oh, yeah. 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 So you basically call you. The guy's got a very, very primitive website. Is the best way to say it. It's very 1997. Geocities.com. Oh, exactly. <laughs> well, it's it's got the name of his company. I'll have to find the name of his company. Okay, I, I don't we'll put it in the show right notes. Right. Yeah, we'll put it in the show notes. Somebody commented about my one website that, oh, it looks like a guy went to jail 20 years ago and came out and built a website. Is <laughs> that your VJMC? <laughs> the the LA, yeah. Lake Erie Loop. Yeah. Lake Erie Loop website. It's, <laughs> it's, it's very basic, but it gives you all of the data you need right. to match your diaphragm for right. your carburetor. It, says it has the diagram. It has the little numbers, all the things you need to match up. And for that that bike, there happens to be two, depending on which carburetor it came with, yada, right. yada, yada. Okay. So you get it, and it tells you exactly where to cut the little plastic ring that goes around the top, how to line it up, because there's a little tiny groove it's got to line up into. Yes, it does. Slide it right on, yep. put it on, rock and roll. Fucking amazing. <laughs> now, as a person who has thrown several CV carburetors across my shop mm-hmm. at maximum velocity... I can promise you that I have tried a diaphragmectomy. It does not work. Hmm. It never works. I've tried patching diaphragms with rubber cement and various different things. It does not work. That the failure of these 25-year-old or 20-year-old CV carbs is the CV boot, Mm -hmm. the diaphragm. And historically speaking, if you could find quote the diaphragm it had the slider as part of it and it was fucking dead nuts expensive to buy one that said honda or suzuki or yamaha or whatever on it the really 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 stupid expensive so we always said if we could only find just the rubber tom found it this bike went from being straight up useless i mean useless do not look up the price of replacement carburetors no, no. for a 2000 Honda VT 1100 Shadow. They are more than the Shadow is worth. I promise you. But how much do these boots cost? Or Let's these diaphragms? See. These were 50, I think, total. Yeah. That's cheaper than a fucking carburetor and rebuild kit from Keister. I did find it. The name of the name of the place is JBM Industries. It's jbmindustries.com. JBM Industries. JBM Industries. Guys, I promise you, if you have a motorcycle that has CV carbs and it's running like dog shit, it's probably because your diaphragms are cracked and leaking. Oh, so if your diaphragms are cracked and leaking, you now have a fucking solution. What it, what's your John, what'd you find? I went to uh, see because I've noticed on Amazon yeah. somehow they've come out online. Yep. Because I was looking up CV yep. 350 mm-hmm. and I was like, holy shit. Yep. You can now buy the the diaphragm. The slider, diaphragm, in, the whole assembly. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I was just looking up the 1100 and right. there was a kit there. It was like $69 for, yep. you know, the whole right. carb. And that's kit and everything set. in the carb. But here's the thing I have to, I have to warn you guys. I, I'm sure it's, I mean, I don't. I have I, bought that kit. Yeah. About five times. Mm. Yep. For my Triumph, for my uh, Thunderbird Sport, I have tried putting those boots, and I promise you, those do not fucking work. Mm -hmm. Take that kit and throw it away. Yeah. Yeah. Because I have done Uh, that. I bought the $30 rebuild kits too, and I, I, I used them. To help. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I didn't use oh, all of them. Yeah. I selected certain parts and stuff. I, bought I was that able to make diaphragm replacement kit that you're, that you're showing right there. Yeah. That, that doesn't come with the slides and the whole deal. Cause I thought I can figure this out. No, you can't. I've tried like shit and put all kinds of time and effort. These ones that he put on mm-hmm. the real work. Isn't the diaphragm. The real work is the instruction of teaching you 
how you actually need to deconstruct the factory original ones mm -hmm. and how to reassemble these in the factory so original button, orientation. How does that button hold the rubber on? Because right. like usually there's like the button this on is, top, right? This is re they're real tight fit. And then some of the some of them actually say you have to super glue it to the diaphragm or to the uh, slide as well. Mm -hmm. yep. But this one this one because of the way it's made that plastic ring is the only thing that holds the stock one on. Mm -hmm. These are like, they're extra, extra tight, so they do not move. So I tried to do a KLR 650 carb based on the kit that John's showing us, on, though it's available on eBay or Amazon. Yeah. And I took it, and I did it the first time. Fail. Put it together, the thing fucking leaked within no time flat. Then I had another, because I ordered two of them, because I had four KLRs. So I ordered <laughs> two of them. And I said, screw it, I'll do the second one. Put the second one on, and I got smart with that one. I put that one in water and boiled the water you know, in the microwave, yep. so it was really soft and supple, and it was real stretchy. And I put it on, and I put the whole thing together, and it, it went for about five fucking minutes before it failed, and I got no throttle response at ever until I was wide fucking open, right? I took it apart, and it literally slid off of the yep. slider. Dude. And I was like, fuck that. You just mentioned something that I don't know if everybody knows this or not, because... I kind of knew it about some things, but for some reason, my brain didn't put it together with the fucking Vespa plugs. Yeah. So when I was building bikes for you, I'll never forget that day. I'm sitting down there with these fucking frame plugs, yeah. trying to get them to go in the bottom. I'm using my hand. I know I can't hit it with something heavy because no. it's going to fuck it up. Right. So I'm like breaking my hand, whatever. Right. Fucking you walk in, you're like, dude, give me that. You threw it in the water, put it in the microwave, pull yep. it out. And it was like I took it out for a dinner, drinks, I fucking <laughs> gave it, it a press. Was it malleable? <laughs> yeah. Was it willing to any of it your was, suggestions? It was so sloppy. It was, was like, open to any of your suggestions? <laughs> exactly, man. Yeah. So there's a mechanics trip. It, whatever you're working with, yeah. here's a tip from your Unky Phil. Water in a microwave. Yeah. The water will turn to steam, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. The water will turn to steam before it gets to a temperature that will destroy the item that you have in it. Right. Okay? So that's the safety valve. The safety valve is the electricity, the, the, the power of the magnetron, rubbing all those fucking atoms together, is going to turn the water to steam. There is no like, I think I did it too long. No, you didn't. You cannot fuck this up. If you put it in water if it's rubber, right? And you throw it in the microwave. Now here, the other thing is, if it's metal and you put water in the microwave and you set that bitch for four minutes, right? <laughs> you would never want to drink that. Mm -mm. No. But if you pull it out, <laughs> yeah, um, use welding gloves. And if you pull it out and you drop the metal item into it, then that metal item will get up to a temperature that is super fucking goddamn hot, yeah. but not hot enough to burn the plastic parts off of it. Mm -hmm. And that's that own weird regulation. It's a temperature safety valve. Water in a microwave, in a cup or a bowl or whatever, saves us so much work at the shop well, putting things that, together. Like, I think not only that, but like, yeah. so if you did, if you did manage to press something in, yeah. it's hard. Yeah. I'm hearing a phone going. Anyway, yeah. you do that. Um, you're not really known if you're going to get a full That's seal, right. but when yeah. it's that supple, you yeah. know it pushes in and it's absolutely you know form fitting around whatever it's sucked in. The microwave trick. I use the microwave at the shop an equal amount for yeah. reheating coffee I didn't get to drink when it was the right temperature right. and also for putting Parts. shit together. Yeah. Yep. Right? That's just what it is. And everybody's like, oh, I tried. This thing doesn't fit over this thing. It just is impossible. They didn't make it big enough. It's not going to fit. Really? Yeah. Watch me. Put it in a microwave for one minute yep. and now pull it out. And you're like, well, won't the microwave melt the rubber part you have in there? No. Mm -hmm. It will heat the water around it but it will never melt the part that's in it. It's right. like, you know, parboiling and it, it makes it, And it and also, because of the hot water, it removes yeah. like the paraffins or whatever, they, the mold release. <laughs> yep. So it actually Oop. becomes yeah. a better piece of rubber anyways. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. And, you know? and once you get those on and they cool down, yeah. they're on. Yeah, they're not coming off. They're not coming off. Oh. You're good. You're good. Good job. That is a well-done installation. Everything lines up. Yep. And you can work with it so nice. It moves around so easily. Yeah, it's you can get that. Those diaphragms go on, and they just look so cool. And you get it perfect. And uh, well, it, the, uh, well, the fucked up before you said anything. Yeah. The left. So there's the fat one and the skinny one. Right. So the yeah. fat one pops right the fuck yeah. in. Oh yeah. But yeah. that skinny one, I almost broke my hand. Oh, I was of like, course. I'm gonna fucking kill this <laughs> yeah. thing. You know. No, but you throw it in the microwave for one minute, and all of a sudden it's just like. Like goes I right said, in. it's like a woman that likes to see her or something. Yeah, oh, it's brilliant. Yeah. Oh, it's absolutely brilliant. And or a dude or whatever, you know. Well, yeah, <laughs> it's just the way it works. Right. And, you know, 
that's a mechanic's trick. That's a you know that's a tech tip from Cleveland Moto. Right. Yeah. Is if you're not sure, like if you, I promise you, if you use a heat gun, you're oh, gonna melt it. Yeah. Yeah. Not if you good. use a fucking torch, you're gonna melt it. There is nothing if you. If you lay it out on the pavement in the hot asphalt, it's not going to be hot enough. Mm-mm. But if you throw it in a coffee mug and <laughs> and set it in the microwave for two minutes, it's going to be perfect. Not only that, but there's something about water, water heat. That, oh, it's, like, it's completely immersive. It's, yeah. it's covering every part of the part. Right. And uh, when I see somebody using shrink wrap on an electrical connector and they're using it with a lighter or a torch, I'm like, that's eh, not good. <laughs> right. You, you cooked some of the shrink wrap and it's hard and brittle now and the other part's really not working right, right? Right. But if you use a source of heat that completely immolate, like completely surrounds it, you get the shrink wrap works perfect. Yeah. Right. The shrink nice wrap little heat gun sucks up perfect and goes all the way around and it's the best seal ever. Mm-hmm. So sometimes, uh, yeah, the microwave water trick works fucking great. <laughs> it really does. Um, I've also found out that you can put... You know how you're not supposed to put metal in the microwave? Right. Right. Uh-huh. Okay. If the metal's under about a half an inch high in the microwave, it's okay. Hmm. Test this in your microwave at home if you're brave. <laughs> um, <laughs> you ever seen a microwave with a metal shelf? Yes. A metal rack? And- yeah. yeah. I, I'm going to tell you, I found out about this by doing carburetor parts and shit like that. If the metal part is under an inch, like low... Like like it's on its belly crawling through the microwave. Yeah, it's gonna be okay. Oh. Yeah, it's fucking weird. I swear to God, it's so well, fucking that would, weird. Probably we did our microwave at home. Was yeah, a, it was a microwave oven. It was an oven with a built-in microwave. And in the like, oven. In the oven. Oh. And you could microwave, and there were metal racks and shit in and there. And it didn't. Yeah. Right. And I don't know how that right. worked. Yeah. Like, um, probably the <sighs> look. No, no, it's gonna be the, it's gonna be the the uh, projector is gonna be. T- uh, I guess that's gonna be the height of the projector on the side of the it, side it, wall. I tested the microwave at the shop, yeah, and there is a solid inch, inch and a half of safe zone. And then I've accidentally put something in there on a plate one time that I've done before, but I was like, oh, I'm gonna put a plate under it, whatever. Each words. Well, you, you it, speak of the projector. Yeah. yeah, it had a thing in the bottom of it yeah. that was like a metal thing with a ceramic around it. Yeah, and that would rotate around. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know how. So I mean, what I learned about the shop well, microwave. Radi- well, radiation is microwaves are, re- are directional. So because yeah. you can bake something and microwave it at the same time <gasps> like a turkey. Genius. <laughs> It's a radar range, of course. Well, yeah. Well, what I learned at the shop was John's that... John's whole family has 12 toes, but we're not talking about that. <laughs> what I learned at the shop is the microwave at the shop has got a rotating dish, yeah. a rotating you know, glass plate, and you just <clears throat> take the glass plate out. You take... Because nobody cares right. about rotisserie. Right. Like, nobody cares about rotational whatever for what we're doing. And if you take the glass dish out and the little skate it runs it on, it makes it much lower, and you could put other parts in there that are metal at the bottom and still heat the top part that's plastic or rubber... And then not heat the metal part that's huh. the bottom. I've done it. I've pulled parts out that are straight up. The The top part is like perfectly malleable, mm-hmm. but the bottom part is ice cold. Hmm. Right. Because the microwave doesn't affect the this lower. This explains why half the time you pull shit out of a microwave, it's still frozen in the middle. Well, yeah. <laughs> it, it, yeah. Right. Right. Because, yeah, they, they don't, they don't well, cook but, evenly for anybody's yeah, money. Yeah. The penetration so, of the. Uh, yeah. So about these diaphragms in this VT1100, though, because. So you're saying that when you pulled it apart, both of the diaphragms were oh fucked? yeah they were they were destroyed because they have it's it's rubber but it's over a um, kind of a fabric yeah and they yeah. crack after I mean anybody who's ever worked on a thirty year old Honda has seen cracked diaphragms yeah and and it goes back to our discussion also about the ethanol fuel and how oh yeah it just what a pandemic that is. Up. Because it also leads to these diaphragms yeah. cracking very very well recently. and then yeah. you know you you get everything. Because what is it? Vtol is the new is the rubber. If it's not the newer style of rubber, it just eats itself up anyway. It doesn't matter what it is. Yeah. Rubber rubber does not like ethanol. No, no, nothing does. Yeah. So, uh, so the difference though in except, this mo- except corn farmers. Yeah. Well, the difference in this motorcycle though for being the the fifty bucks you oh, spent, yeah. Yeah. the fifty bucks we spent on two diaphragms, yeah. and the bike was like, hey, let's go party. Yeah. And I haven't ridden a VT1100 Shadow in a really long time. And it turns out they're fun motorcycles. Oh, yeah. It turns out it's actually a pretty goddamn good motorcycle yep. at doing motorcycle shit. Yep. Um, I'm really enjoying my intruder. I'm that's sorry. what I wanted to say. <laughs> John <laughs> showed up the other day. John. 
Uh-huh. What were you riding? My Intruder 800. And what year is that bike? 1993. <laughs> <laughs> John had a smile on his face on a bright sunny day in Cleveland, Ohio. It was a freebie from my brother. Yep. And it was running perfectly. Yeah. I mean it's but 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 I mean it's fucking perfect. Bra bra bra. Yeah. And I mean like John showed up and I was like, "Hey, you can't park that here." <laughs> 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 I would like. I'm like. I'd like a 1400. The 1400 be fun. <sighs> I mean, Man, I, yeah, it's sway back. It ain't beautiful, but psh. no, it is definitely it's sway back. It, it look kind of cool. You had it here a while ago, and it was alright. Look, it's really clean. Yeah. 21 inch front wheel. It is. It, look, all of these. The VT 1100 oh, Shadow. Yeah. The VT 1100 <laughs> Shadow. That bike. All these are are. Not Harley Davidson Dynas. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. all they are. Yeah. They're not Harley Davidson well, Dynas. I mean, I ordered a set of 1400 shocks for it. Ah. I'm hoping that they're a little heavier duty. Yeah, because they will be. I, mean, I gave Peggy a ride and it's like, gunk, 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 gunk. Is that the 800 or the 900? Well, I have the 800. 800. So the deal with those, and I'm going to try to, is your shaft drive? Shaftish. Okay. So I guess the deal was that you took the shaft drive out of the 1500. 1400 1400 thank yep. you yeah that's what it was and you took the shaft the rear the rear assembly out and you transferred them because the 800 sort of runs out of revs at 80 miles an hour 85 miles an hour uh, yeah yeah yeah. Uh, yeah i mean i was on the highway at 70 75 keeping up yep. with traffic it wasn't like screaming yeah. its guts out yeah. Not way better than probably like an 883 or right. something would be, you know? Yeah, buddy, one of our customers years ago brought us a C50, and he was like, yeah, me and the old lady get on this thing on the highway, and it's really just screaming. And I said, eh, I looked it up. and It's screaming if you're used to a Harley. Yeah. But it's well, not screaming right. for me because right. I'm used to 10,000. you're 10, used to the line four cylinder. No. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, it's fine. And it was funny because the guy was like, he said, if I buy this part, will you install it? And I was like, fuck yeah, bring it by. Let's see what it does. And we did. We put that final drive in. Out of that uh, 1400 or what? Yeah. And it was great. It was literally overdrive. Mm-hmm. It got overdrive then. And the, the motor was more than enough to pull it along. It did not have any shortage of motor. I want a bigger tank. <laughs> it, has a, <laughs> it has a 3.2 yeah, gallon tank. Because it's the intruder. Yeah. It has yeah, the, the peanut carbs. Tank. The carbs are up inside the tank. Like, oh, so oh, the yeah, tank the, is the, not. Like, there's yeah. the carbs are right they, here, and a, the tank is covering them it's up. It's a U no, shaped saddle tank. But it's, yeah. a, it's a, uh, if I remember, they're a. The top one sits flat. Like yeah, the top's like flat. a downdraft. Yeah, it's right. a downdraft yeah. car. And then the, and back, the back is a side draft. It's just a standard yeah. side draft. Yeah. 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 So you really, you really can't get away from it. And then the batteries. Um, uh, way oh, tucked up underneath. The battery is It's a YTX 14, and you have to, if you're ever working on one of these, you have to put it in a certain way. Like yes. you're, the way you want to put it in is not the way you put it in. If you can install, like I'm like, one, do I have to jack this up to put it in? Yeah. No. They're like if you do it just the right way, it'll go in. Yep. And you can't put like you have to put it up in and it, put it there. And it has special side posts. Like you're really supposed to have this special battery that has yeah. side posts. I ended up making my own little extender. So that I could put the a little six inch piece of cable on it, put it up in there, hook it up, and then yeah. do a separate thing. It's, Every time it's, we did one, I was always whatever new mechanic was working there, and I'd be like, "Okay, so we're doing an intruder battery today. Today, you're going to learn about welding." <laughs> <laughs> oh. And I told him, I was like, "This is the this is the reason why we do red terminal, positive terminal first. Mm-hmm. Yep, and we do negative terminal last." The reason we do positive terminal first is because you can put the positive terminal on and then orientate the battery without welding the battery to the frame. Because once the welding starts, if you let go of the battery, it's not going to let go. The battery no longer falls down. The battery is now welded to the frame. (laughs) And now we're just going to make a fire, right, where your motorcycle used to be. So I I teach the young mechanics. I'm like, that is why we go red terminal first. We put it in in situ, and then we put the negative terminal up. And as we lightly touch the negative terminal to the battery, we find out if we've accidentally grounded the positive terminal to any part of the metal parts of the bike. I mean, my Superhawk, you have to absolutely do the red one first because the... You have to kind of like the screwdriver has to lean against it the frame. It does have to <laughs> lean against the frame. I to get promise the, to you. Get the screw in and out. Same with every Honda Pacific Coast, every PC800. Putting the battery in, you're like, why didn't the people at the factory give me one? more inch of red cable 
Why didn't they get... Because if they gave you one more inch of red cable, you could weld yourself to the battery. Mm -hmm. It's It was actually the people at Honda going, if they do it wrong, it won't fucking work. So they have to do it with the battery completely stationary and set. But... To find a wrench that can go where that red goddamn positive terminal is, you need to have a shrink ray to shrink yourself down to about the size of a three inch tall, like an action figure, go in, start the fucking nut, the bolt, and then get out. It's ridiculous, but that's the way they work. Yeah. It's fucking hilarious. That intruder, it is the definition of. A whole era of motorcycles. You said 93? 93, man. 93. That is a whole definition. We were talking earlier. I can see why that VT1100 would be yeah. awesome, though. I yeah. mean, like, sure, why not? It, and even the weird handlebars on mine, like, yeah. you know, you're not at all. Your hands are like this. Right. Yeah, you're literally they're, they're punching pistol, straight ahead. Pistol grips. I feel like I'm a, I'm a gunner. A we gunner or something. Do, we called them ACAC gunners. We were yeah. like, the, <laughs> yeah, they're ACAC gunner handles. It yeah. felt weird at first, but then now I kind of like it. It's you like see, low strain. Guys, and then I learned, you know, like I'm used to leaning forward on a bike. Yeah. Well, no, when you're cornering, just lean back. Lean, yeah. You got to lean back. You know, <laughs> you go, like, it's, there's, that's fine. There's a dude that rides a Harley. He's making the rounds on social media. Yeah. He's got knives just sticking out, and he holds the knives, and like, and he just, like, one's still his <sighs> throttle, but they're just oh vertical God. knives. Oh, man. I do not think that's a great idea. I don't but anyway. either, but he's doing his thing, man. You know, you know, I had a bayonet as a side stand on my motorcycle for years, <laughs> years. I had a, you know, an, or an Enfield bayonet <laughs> on my motorcycle for a long time. And everybody's like, that's really stupid. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it looks really cool. And they're like, yeah, but having a bayonet on your motorcycle. And I was like, hey, I don't know. yeah. Yeah. Hey, the only person who needed to be out. happy was you. And in the long run, when I sold that fucking thing with all my giga bullshit on it, like all my you know stab, sharp stabby items that were you know uh, the, the world's largest assortment of pike nuts, <laughs> <laughs> Colony Lumber or Colony Hardware was very happy to see me coming. I was like, so I need uh, I need two hundred and thirty seven pike nuts in various sizes. Huh. And, and, can guy, you, and can I cut up twenty circular saw blades and weld them <laughs> all over it? <laughs> Oh, that was fucking Tazzy and his chopper. Uh, that that was a disaster. I, I still have sc scars from that. I thing. remember. I, rem I remember when probably about two thousand and two, yeah. two thousand three, when that caught on with all the wheelie boys. Yeah. And so the motherfuckers would be putting them on like all the bolts that hold yeah. their, their everything on. Yeah. And but these are the same bikes that they're doing twelve o'clock wheelies I, with their face staring at them. So like yeah. it's like, dude, I used to laugh Wait, my dude. ass off. Like, and that's what people forgot was all those pike nuts. Like on my one chopper, I had these pike nuts that were 24 millimeter. Yeah, no, they were no joke. They were gigantic. And each one of them weighed about four and a half pounds, <laughs> right? There, so is, there is nothing short of a fucking butt plug <laughs> on the back of that CB450 that I got for $33. I mean, it's a six inch pike. I mean, like it is a total fucking butt plug, dude. I'm is like, it on the oh, axle? It's back on the back fender. I'm like, well, that's where you put the third person or something. <laughs> or that's, that's it's where just the going through a sheet metal it's, fender? Yeah, and it's just a And it weighs huge, like 12 pounds. Hey, yeah, we it's slap, a huge one. We're going to oh slap a 212 on that thing? Do whatever we want, man. I don't care. Yeah, bring it. Let's make a 212 on it. We'll put a fucking Harbor Freight bitch on that thing. Oh, dude. my God. It doesn't fucking matter. I don't yeah. know. If I get the 450 there, who knows what we can build. Real. Look, I'm know. just waiting to transplant oh, yeah. my fucking Springer over to Sleepy's Garage. Yeah. So if I transplant my Springer to Sleepy's Garage, he's going to get all this fucking deviant shit out of his system. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. All right. I'll bring a trailer. Let me know. Bring a trailer. It's going to come back with pike nuts all over no, it. No, it's already got pike nuts all oh, over it. Good, good, good. It needs a pike nuts. Oh, it's gonna get love. It needs a stabby flame. It's gonna get so much love. It's gonna get molested. I got the cool. No, I got more. all the cool shit. I bought all the cool shit for it. The black, oh, wow. the black good handlebars. Like you, we're gonna take. We're gonna scare the fucking nineties right off that bike. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All that bullshit. Fucking yeah. All all that that disco queen of Montana shit that's on there right now. It's all gone. But hold on, keep it because then I'll put that on the van. <laughs> van. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, then we can have I'm all not the throwing flames, it away. All oh, no. the flame mirrors. Oh, we're sleep, putting it in a box. Sleepy, yeah. sleep, you know what it takes to get Phil to throw something away? Right. Not much lately. <laughs> not much so lately. wait, so wait. If that's going to happen, then you know what? I'll give, I will gift, I will gift our newest addition 
the KE100 that he was slobbering over at Mid-Ohio. So now we're all giving everybody bikes. Now everybody's So now happy. you're going to have a new bike too, yeah. Tom. I'm going to have a bike. Yeah. I just brought four back. Oh, God. You need another one. He's, he's the only this guy in the world importing rust to Cleveland. Right. <laughs> yeah. This one works, though. You can have it. Oh, okay. Yeah. That'll work. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Back to Cleveland Moto actually yeah, giving yeah, you yeah. a fucking tech tip. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Here's a tech tip. If you have a, <laughs> I don't know, 2000 to 2005 Triumph T100 Bonneville, mm. let me tell you a little something about this. What about a, 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 a Thunderbird? Also counts. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's not so funny. 96-ish. <laughs> We're just going to talk about that particular parallel twin motor with a couple of carburetors, right? We all know it. You guys know it. I don't need to describe it. It's what it is. It's a carburetor-powered Bloor Enterprises revival of the Triumph Corporation. Some of them were made in England, and some of them were made in not England, mm -hmm. okay? But the point being, they're all kind of the same. So what you're saying is the second set had the guys that made them had better teeth. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Just saying. I won't go there. Send hate mail to wow. Sleepy at. <laughs> yeah, I will pick on people for a lot of stuff, Ooh. but I do not myself possess a full rack of teeth. Oh yeah, neither do I. Okay, do so I. all right, all right. But the ones I have look good. <laughs> yeah, the front ones look okay. All right, yeah. All right, all right. I'm no Shane McGowan, but uh, <laughs> but here's here's my point. It turns out if somebody offers you a sore dick deal mm. on a Triumph Bonneville with what has carburetors, mm -hmm. you may be in for a surprise. Because you might think that a 2005 motorcycle would be relatively easy to get parts from. It's from this goddamn century. It's from this goddamn millennia, mm. right? My, my truck's a 2005. I was able to get parts for it without a problem. In fact... Different manufacturers and different level of how much I wanted to pay for certain parts. They were all fighting for your money, weren't they? Yeah, they were. Right. right. So apparently uh, there's more demand for broken Dodges mm -hmm. than there are for keeping a Triumph alive. Yeah. So if you're going to wander down the path of a twin cylinder Triumph vintage looking motorcycle or even a triple from back then what has carburetors yeah i was about to say because okay. i got all the same parts just more of them you're going to need ein fuel tap mm -hmm. good luck and if you think i'm full of shit clevelandmoto at gmail.com is where you send me your source right. for replacement triumph fuel taps for carbureted triumphs of that era. And hold on. Let me add to that. Go ahead. That before you send a link mm. to a store that says they have 15 in them or <laughs> any of the parts, <laughs> yep. you have to verify and call the place that yeah. is listing yeah. the 15 because yeah. that's I, that was, I was trying to find the luggage racks, and I went through that for fucking time. Um, I have two different stores that took my credit card number and took over three weeks to let me know, ah, Terribly sorry for a disappointment. We don't have those. Well, wait. Tell us what you you didn't even call. This is not like you called California. No. This is not like you called New York. Where I did called you call Norman fucking Hyde? <laughs> in the where? The guys. In where? In jolly old England. There you go. And I called him and I said, I used to buy a lot of parts from you <laughs> when I used to have motorcycles that would only start with a Kickstarter mm -hmm. and I was younger. But... I'm sure you are the person to talk to about needing a fuel petcock for my Triumph motorcycle, for my parallel twin Triumph motorcycle. And they went, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, but I'm, I'm an industrious person. I just need the rubber gasket. What is inside? Because the metal is fine. Mm -hmm. The metal is metal. And John and I have rebuilt... A whole shit ton of Honda Petcocks by simply replacing a little tiny disc with four holes in it. Mm -hmm. And they work. And the rivets that Honda put them together with can be drilled out and replaced with screws. And they work. And that's not a problem. So I said, send me the cookie. We call them cookie. Send me the cookie. Send me the little cookie, walk, the little cookie rubber disc in there with the three or four holes poked in it. And I will take care of the rest. I'll grind out the rivets and I'll 
put in fucking self-tapping screws or bolt it straight through or whatever the fuck I want to do. But we don't have those. Does that cookie have a part number? It does not. Can you sell me the whole entire goddamn fuel tap for way too much money? Mm-hmm. I'd love to. But we haven't seen any in a while. Oh, <gasps> shit. Well, what do you recommend I do? Install a Pingle. Now, Pingle, P-I-N-G-E-L, or, yeah. If you have ever owned a Kawasaki KZ-1000 or big, other big fun bike, you'll know that Pingle is God's answer to fuel taps and petcocks in 1976. And they've survived just because of fuel taps, right? And I've had pingles on a shit ton of bikes I've owned. Some of my bikes have had two, right? But here's what I can tell you. The Triumph gas tank has not a traditional bung in the bottom. It has a bit of an odd bung hole. <laughs> It's bunghole is not pingle standard. You must get a bunghole adapter to go from the Triumph bunghole to the pingle bunghole. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I asked these fellas if they had any of those, and they don't. (laughs) Because demand has exceeded supply. And that's where we're getting into a problem. And this is why I want to bring this up. Tom, how easy was it to find rebuild kits for the Kawasaki... 650 parallel twin carburetors. Well, to start with, from the outside, we both went, well, these look exactly like the Triumph carburetors. They sure do. They look exactly like They look like exactly the, like have, the Triumph they have carburetors. The fuel, they have the air shut off. Everything's exactly the same. So I went, okay, cool. I've got those kits. Yep. We have K&L kits. Yep. We'll put them on. Yep. Pull the carbs. Nope. They're not the same. They're not the same. Kawasaki, for some reason, had to literally... Now, I'm not sure if Kawasaki did or if Triumph did, but one of those two people said, we can't just have the same CV carb everybody else is using. Right. We need to put an accelerator pump on ours. Exactly. And so you pull them apart. They don't have the crossover, thankfully, that the Triumph has. Right. Because those always leak, and you cannot find those stupid square O-rings. So you get it all apart. Look at it. Wrong bowl gaskets. Right. And it took me... I finally found some obscure... Again, another one of those weird obscure websites where they just so happen to have that exact... Is that a vacuum petcock or a regular plain petcock? It's, it's plain a regular pe- plain. Yeah. Plain petcock. And the only yeah. rebuild kits that I've found... Because I've found exactly what you're, you're looking at now, which is the one with the diaphragm. So the question becomes, can we just throw the diaphragm in the trash? <laughs> well, it would get, it would let you get the the, the, the other seal pieces. to the tank. It would get you yeah. that little one. The seal which, to the tank is great. That, that but, looks a lot like a Kawasaki, dude. Oh, yeah. No, no. It looks a lot like a fucking SSR, dude. Yeah. It looks a lot Trust like me, we've had every a, it looks Chinese a lot like, carb But the bolt spacing is just wrong. No, it's wrong. Yeah. yeah. I went through but my that, entire... This kit would get you that, the, the seal yeah. to the tank, but that's yeah. not what you but That's need. not where it's leaking currently. No. No, it's, it's actually currently a, leaking through the actual on-off reserve, yeah, which yeah. is where every single one of them, which leaks. is the cookie we were talking about yep. earlier that I need. Right. So, right. So but, I'm going to drill it apart and cut it apart and take the cookie out. I ordered a bunch of wintergreen oil and I'm going to submerse it in wintergreen oil and see what happens. Yeah. I mean, can't, is it something that you could just make out of some kind of a nope. rubber or fiber? Or well, something? so yeah. to answer your question in the old days when I was dirt as poor, I would make the cookies. So I would cut cookies cookies out of thick rubber and i would cut cookies out and i'd hole punch them or use a leather punch yeah. to punch the holes in them that i needed because i was too cheap to buy the cookies for my honda cb 750 right and i would cut them out myself and put them in and they would work sometimes sometimes yeah yeah now the problem is not working equals my shop smelling like gasoline right. and having a puddle of gasoline in my shop and i don't choose to live that way right and also, the guy I'm trying to sell the bike to probably doesn't want to live that way either. Right. So I would like to have a bit of a better solution mm-hmm. than a 75% chance of gas being on the floor. Eh, I just call me weird that way. I also believe I should exist in a society where I should be able to pick up you know, the internet and look for a keister kit to rebuild a, a, two th- oh, yeah. a year 2000 Kawasaki carburetor because yeah. Kawasaki makes a lot of motorcycles. Mm. So I would think that Keister or KNL or whoever it is, whichever one of the usual scumbags, would make a, a rebuild kit for a carburetor that was used on 93,000 oh, yeah. motorcycles, yeah. you know? But they don't. And this is where I want to go on my 
I'm mad as hell and I'm not going to take any more rant. <laughs> right? Now, back in my day, people made parts for vehicles that were 18 years old. Mm -hmm. That doesn't happen anymore. The second you can't buy, the second you don't have a demand for a thousand. Yeah, British Customs. Yeah, that. British yeah. Customs. Well, British Customs is Triumph. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So British Customs is Triumph. And that tap that you're looking at, mm -hmm. right? Um, so I contacted... It's from like a scrambler. It's from all of them. Oh, are they all, yeah. they're all the same. Yeah, they're, they're basically all the same. Yeah. So I contacted our local Triumph dealer. Bonneville with Bill T100. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Oh, yeah, I contacted them with that very part number, and he went, not even going to bother taking your money. Haven't seen one of those cross my shelves in over two years. That's from my local dealer. And that was with the part number off of Triumph's website. $109. Dude. $109 for a literally one moving part piece of shit. Very proud of it. But honestly, at this point, I'll pay $109. But what I'm hoping for is somebody listens to this podcast is going to go, you guys are all stupid. The fucking fuel tap from a van van, a, a 1974 van van works perfectly. And I will take the abuse. I'll blame Tom. Yeah. And we'll, we'll buy these fuel taps from whoever we got to buy them from. And if somebody says, well, it's the same fucking fuel tap on a, it's, a, a Shine Ray 125 it's, mini bike. It's, it's I'll take be, it. It's going to be a fuel star. It's just going to be some weird number. I don't. Yeah, I'll buy it from anybody I got to fucking yeah. buy it from. But we can't be the only ones out there because the Triumph Rat, like Triumph Rat Forum is long in the beard. Oh, yeah. Triumph Rat Forum is a bunch of crusty fucks. I was and, on it for like two weeks, and I'm like, I got to get out of here. Oh, <laughs> uh, in the time that I yeah. was on here, you looking lasted for these, two weeks longer than I did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, in the time I was on there trying desperately to research these taps and everything else, what I learned is that like the Triumph Rat Forum is turned into like a evangelical Christian pro Trump. Oh, it's terrible. Website. Yeah. yeah. Like they're all just like. So uh, my, uh, my, my, my carburetor's not getting gas, and that's why Jesus is coming back next Dude, week. And I'm I, like, I, wow, I, that's I posed, crazy. I was looking for those luggage racks before yeah. I made them. Yeah. And this, I mean, this is a couple of years ago, so it was still even bad then. And I posted like, hey, blah, blah, you know, right. I've, I've read things, all this stuff. If anybody, right. I know they're not available, but if anybody has a set they're not using, right. whatever, yeah. um, that turned into like, Oh, did you try Bike Bandit? Right. Yeah, I did. They ripped me off. Blah right. blah. Well, that's because they're in California. Boom. And Cal After yeah, that, California is full of fucking. Yeah. yeah right. Oh, yeah, dude, it went to hell and oh, back yeah, yeah, in yeah, fucking yeah. two seconds. They are all waiting for the opportunity. Oh yeah. In their selective echo chamber. Yeah. To be like, oh, yeah. that's what they're waiting for. And we, you know, we've got parts off of motorcycles in my shop. That you know, ever when Tom started going through my world. <laughs> he's like Phil's got really cool weird shit in here but we don't have anybody to catalog it and list it and yeah. put it online and, 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 and monetize it right mm -hmm. we just have an 11,000 square foot building with parts that have accumulated over 25 years yeah and it's some cool really cool shit but nobody's ever gonna know yeah, that's a problem because it's some, the Raiders of the Lost Ark warehouse. And there's some dude is. out there that needs that part on the seventh shelf to the left by yeah. the one Vespa. Yeah. And he's probably willing to pay about five grand for yeah, that fucking part. He'll never meet it. I that know. part and he will never. <laughs> a squirrel's dragged that part through the wall already. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, Dan, I figured out the deal with the squirrel. Tom found the metal sign that you donated to the shop. Ah. You donated a metal sign at one point. Some, you know, lowbrow sign or whatever. If you say. You did. <laughs> did you try baiting him with some Subaru wiring? <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. See, oh, if the that's podcast. An expensive, oh, that's a very expensive topic <laughs> for Dan. If, if the that, podcast. That's soy based insulation. Next thing you know, Phil's going to be like, hey, let's take the podcast back to the thing. Dan, we saved you a parking spot oh. right here. On <laughs> I pulled out seven and a half pounds of expanding foam that I put in there. Yeah. yeah. Eh, they didn't care. So where do you think I dropped off the squirrels that were living in my car? <laughs> ah. <laughs> and ours was like the complete United Colors of Benetton squirrels. We had a black squirrel and a brown squirrel and a gray squirrel, and they oh, were yeah. all living happily together. Sing Kumbaya. Every time yeah, we we homed the them. Well, I went in there today, and I scared the fuck out of them. <laughs> I beat. I, I had a PVC pipe, and I'm just beating on everything until I heard them leave the, uh, the fan housing. And then I watched them scuttle across, you know, the, the roll-up door and everything else. 
And it's a fairly nice day out. So they were all happy to go out and scamper around and do squirrely shit. So <laughs> I, I took the wood that I off with the 17 drywall screws that I used to put it on. Mm-hmm. I de screwed everything. I pulled all three layers of boards off that I had installed. So you scrutinized it. I de scrutinized it. And I unscrutinized it. And then I put the metal plate on. So I put the metal plate on, and then I went around that like I was repairing a fucking Messerschmitt. <laughs> the way that I went in a perfect circle with the, with the drywall screws, like, fuck you, squirrels. Fuck you, squirrels. <laughs> and so I did go in the whole way. And what was funny is, apparently, some of the squirrels had evacuated, but there were like a squirrel in my shop that didn't get the message. <laughs> so we had the roll-up door wide open and the bright sunshine signing and like the whole deal. And there was a box of Dunkin' Donuts that somebody had thrown out by the, uh, by the trash barrel in front of our shop. So we have Dunkin' Donuts across the street. And one of our homeless fellas had garbage picked a bag of Dunkin' Donuts from the trash, from the dumpster, made it across the street. I don't know why he came across the street. Right. But then he dumped all the Dunkin' Donuts that he couldn't eat at the foot of our trash can. Mm. And do you want to know something about Dunkin' Donuts? Squirrels love them. No, squirrels and possums won't eat them. No? Yeah, they're not food. <laughs> I can tell you that, oh, yeah. that squirrels and possums and raccoons and birds and crows and grackles and starlings. No, 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 no. A raccoon will definitely eat that shit. Six I, days. Okay. Yeah. Six days unfucking touched. Mm. Six days. So these donuts sat out of a cardboard box in a pile next to my fucking trash can <laughs> for six goddamn days. That's crazy. And today I had to go out there with the garden hose and the whole deal and make them all disappear, right? But I was shocked that they like like yeah. that there were still donuts there after six days. That makes but, you wonder what we're eating, man. Well, the squirrels had fu- well, I won't touch a Dunkin' Donut. Yeah, no, no way, no, man. No, no. But anyway, the squirrels had fu- so the one squirrel was in my shop today and I'm working on this two stroke and I'm I'm just rang dang dang rang dang dang rang dang dang and the and I heard the 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 scruffling of a squirrel and I heard the scruffling of a squirrel and I looked up and the squirrel tried to run out the hole that is now blocked by a piece of metal. <laughs> He ran at that hole three times. Like There's was, no hole there. Yeah. <laughs> he bounced off a piece of metal three times. How fucking stupid is this squirrel? And I stopped the bike and I went over and I was like, dumbass. There's a giant 10 foot tall roll up door with sun shining through it. Well, you know, I think what it is, is he probably like, he's been into that hole so many times. Oh, right? yeah. So like, he can't believe that there's something there because well, his and body he's knows he's chewed that. through that hole three right, times. Right, right. It's kind of like your mom. It's, oh, <laughs> oh <laughs> Anybody under the $10 level does not oh, get that, that joke. That sucks so bad. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. <laughs> so, hey, did you guys see the, the thing I sent over today about the 2025 uh, Honda Grom? They're, Talk to us about that. So in Japan right now, it's available, or this this version of it is available. But if you didn't think adventure bikes were popular, they're coming out with the Adventure Grom, which has <laughs> handguards <laughs> and fucking panniers and a tail bag and everything. Because, you know, you want to travel across you know, the country. 125 cc's. Yeah. yeah, so, yeah. I, you do some long distance traveling, maybe. I mean, it is cute, though. Did you see this guy? Oh, it's Look adorable. It yeah. It's cute. It is cute. <laughs> but I also think that it would be cute. I think it would be cute if they made a Honda Grom powered Goldwing. But look at the little windscreen. Oh, no. The whole thing is <laughs> hilarious. Oh, that windscreen won't even cover your left testicle. Yeah, that is that is one hundred percent not going to protect. I'd rather you. have a monkey done that. Look, it's that, got a little monkey be- touring. It's got a belly monkey pan. Touring. They put a belly. It has pan a belly on pan on it. On it. Yeah. 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 Um. Oh, the monkey touring would be good, dude. Want to say? Want to say thanks to ten dollar Patreon member, ten dollars Patreon member Christopher Morgan, ten bucks. That's solid. <laughs> that is a solid fucking membership right there. What's up, that Chris? is legit. Thanks, Chris. Uh, oh, um, you sent me that thing. Do you I'm going to read it to you again. Okay. Warm it up, Chris. All right. <laughs> I'm about to. All right. Because that's what I was born to do. All right. So Patreon question for uh, Sleepy. So here's the question. Hey, Sleepy, you seem to know a thing or two about getting high on paint fumes. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. 100%. <laughs> I'm considering a GSR 600 for a uh, track bike, and I would be buying Armor Bodies fiberglass fairings. Good stuff. They come primered, 
but I have no clue how to do a good job painting them. Every time I've painted motorcycle parts in the past, just metal parts, I feel I did a good job with many, many, many small coats. However, no matter how long I waited for them to dry, they'd be sticky and pick up fingerprints. Any advice? I live in an apartment, but I have plenty of outdoor space to pray to, to spray, and that's Nick Childs. Yeah. So that's one of our Patreon members, and he's asking a question. And because he's a Patreon member, we're reading it as soon as it came in, mm-hmm. and we're about to lay some fucking knowledge on him. Yeah. So you had sent this to me, and I, and I went over it. So basically, I'd, I'd have to know what kind of paint he sprayed. But basically, if you want to do a good paint job. Once you find something that works, always stick to it and always go back and do the exact same process. Um, there's a couple things that I'll give tips out that I've found through lots of mistakes and then this finally worked. Um, with the primer, the bike comes primer, but you're still going to want to sand it with like a 600 grit uh, sandpaper just to get some teeth into it, make sure it's smooth and go over everything. And then I like to use a glass cleaner from Home Depot or something. It's like spray away. It's the blue and white can you see everywhere. It comes in a blue and white can. Yeah. Uh, And it's aerosol. It's aerosol. And the important thing about it is it's called spray away because it leaves absolutely no residue. Mm -hmm. So if you spray that and then you wipe it off with like a brand new like microfiber towel or something. cheese cloth. And then you get the the, the tack cloth too Mm -hmm. after that and then go over it. Um, but it's going to come down to the paint. So those kind of things, you're still going to want to use a good like automotive paint. And you can get a single stage, which will definitely flash, you know, and, and set for you, or a two stage for the race bike. I don't know if you want to go through that because if you have to repair it, you're not going to want to repair it clear. You've done some stuff with rattle cans, or you're saying no, you can't do this you with can't, the rattle can. You, well, I've never now now that they're having the rattle cans where it actually has the two parts in it, and you can hit that thing on the bottom like the the Spray Max two K activate it. Yeah, so like there are if you can find a two K paint then that you could put right over the primer and, and it would cure and et cetera. You That's going to be dry. about 20 bucks a can though, right? It's a very expensive. Yeah. I had a question about that because my problem in the past has always been with fairings, especially because I used to run air tech on my race bike right. and I, would you know, kind of go through a set of fairings every 15 races or whatever. Right. Uh, it's a lot of surface area. Mm-hmm. And so the idea is I was painting at a time when, I would either lay down with HL, uh, a high, pre- uh, high volume, low pressure, HVLP gun, or just cans. And I would lay down with one hand and then I clear coat with the other hand. Right? I mean, <laughs> right on top. Because it's a big surface area, right? right? And the problem was it was such a big surface area that I couldn't do that. So I couldn't do that like two pack style where I wanted to do but essentially want- covering something that just flashed over well that's the thing i mean you're gonna at least so you're flashed so that's another thing too is to pay attention to temperature and humidity yeah if you're talking about tacky paint that could be from too much humidity or using the wrong activator so you have to pay attention to what the temperature is when you're painting Mm -hmm. and so the different activators like there's a slow activator so that's like for 85 degrees to 100 degrees because obviously you want it slower because the heat would cause it to flash too fast oh really yeah and then it gets faster for slower. So anything, you don't want to paint ever below 60 degrees. Okay. But between 60 to 75, you use the fast the fast activator. Okay. Because fa- that'll still, so fast activator when it's cold, l- let me say this. All these activators used in the bright uh, temperature frame would take about 15 minutes to flash. So okay. that's what you want. That gives you enough time then. Yeah, it gives you so enough time. So you can t- cover all the surfaces on right. like a set of fairings. Yeah, right. So you can use your color coat. Right. Or you can do your color coat on four or five pieces of body work. But it hasn't cured enough where you're going to lose chemical adhesion okay. for that's your That's what next. I wanted to yeah, know Yeah, so that's, that's okay. what you want. So basically when we're talking about coats of paint, um, there's one of two things. If, if you've already laid it down and it's pretty smooth and it's not a metallic, because metallics you can't do this to, but if it's a solid color and you want to do multiple coats, you either spray it once and then let it flash for about 10 to 12 minutes, mm-hmm. but not longer than 30 minutes. Okay. And then you hit it with the next coat because that's the chemical bond to it. So they're going to lock into each other. Yeah. Your, your multiple layers are going to lock into each other. Chemically. And we're talking about buying paint, non aerosolized paint, no. in an actual can of paint. Can of paint. And putting it into your um, your conventional spray gun. Spray gun. Or Gravity here's something gun. that I can suggest, and I've been using this because like, I was trying different. I don't have a giant compressor. Right. So I was trying all these different compressors. And the problem with like any kind of an HLV from like anywhere that uses a compressor right if you don't have line dryers if you oh, yeah. don't have yeah. oil things and oh stuff, you're gonna get fish eye like all crazy. kinds of shit yeah. so 
Here, I can't recommend these enough. So you have like the Fuji sprayers. They're turbine sprayers. Right. Um, I have the Fuji something too. So it's just like, it's like a giant vacuum cleaner <laughs> or electric, electric yeah. jet engines. Yeah. Okay. And it forces the air through it like an HLVP setup. Right. But the awesome thing about it is the heat. An HVLP is high volume, low, low pressure. pressure. Right. To clarify for people playing at home. Right. And HVLP has been around for 40 fucking years. Yeah. And, and that, you get that Avante that I bought from Harbor Freight. Did you see that thing? No. It was, it's basically, I mean, it's cheap as chips, yes, maybe is. 50 bucks. Yeah. But it has like a, it sounds like a vacuum cleaner. That's what you, it is. When you hit it, it's like, yeah. and it just blows a ton of air. And then you're like, shh. And it's all plastic and it's janky, but I, I sprayed some stuff with it, some oil-based paint, and it like it was a pretty fine mist. But this I is the feel thing, like- but you can find these Fuji ones for like 150, 200 bucks, and you have a professional system that you can use yeah. every fucking day. This mine's a four turbine sprayer; they have up to seven. Jesus! So the seven really drives the air. But the cool part right. is, is that there's no oil, right? Because it's not a compressor yeah. with the thing moving; it's it's a turbine, yeah. um, and also the heat because of the turbine means that there's no moisture in no the moisture air. at all so you never have those problems i can tell you god when i think about how dumb i was but i tried using my conventional it's, it's breathtaking it is breathtaking <laughs> how stupid i was but i was trying to use my conventional shop con- compressor right going through a, the same fucking bullshit oil separator that i've had for forever that right. gets emptied once a year right and uh, emptied my tank and, you know, drained all the water out of my tank. Yeah, that's great. And I ran my air over to my silver line, whatever the fuck, you know, low budget, you know, gravity spray gun. And I'm spraying and I was like, Jesus Christ, this looks like dog shit. And I color sanded the gas tank on my bike 17 fucking times, wasting my time, wasting my effort. Color, like spray coat, color sand, spray coat, color sand, thousand grit bullshit wasting all this fucking time i watch a guy use a two part 2k spray can all he did was shoot in the morning yes yeah when the birds have eaten and the bats have eaten all the bugs yep wet down the, his garage floor and the humidity so yep. Yep. At, at, in the evening all the yep. dew falls yep. out of the air and yep. first thing in the morning yep. you're going from cold to hot and yep. so there's no humidity this dude is like I, I wet down my garage floor yeah. so that everything went down to the floor. All the dust in the air and everything else went down to the floor. I hung up a shower curtain in my fucking garage. Mm-hmm. In my garage, he hung a shower curtain. Well, well, here's the thing, though. You don't even have to really worry about it. So yeah. nowadays, pain has come so long. So like we were talking before, um, you know, it, you either you can do single stage or two. Right. Um, or, okay, so like if you wait for the 15-minute window and your yeah. activator hits and then yeah. you spray it again, that's yeah. the chemical adhesion. Say like you can't, you can only hit it with one coat. You have to leave that day or whatever. Okay. Then you let it dry fully. Fully dry. And then you come back with 600 grit and color sand it. And then that that gives it tooth for the next layer to right. lie back in. Right. So that's the two mechanic. It's either mechanical or yeah. chemical adhesion. Right. But um, color sanding, I'm done. I'm never doing that again. Yeah, well, it works. But so this is yeah. interesting. So, but so like for that, that guy, for the race guy, I would get... And I'm really bad. I, I just buy automotive paint, but I always forget if it's lacquer or urethane. I, I Whatever it is on the thing, I get the right stuff, oh, but yeah. I can never That's remember right. it, this thing. But I think single stage is lacquer, single stage lacquer. So I think that would be a lacquer. Yeah, I usually with lacquer, I don't think you really use an, a, an activator or no, anything. No, but, but that that will cure, but though. But that's super thin, and you've got to put like 20,000 coats. Yeah, so that's the problem. You're probably going to want a urethane, a, a, a single stage. You can get single stage urethane. Or a two-stage or a thing. Right, but here's here's the thing, though. This is kind of interesting. This might work for this dude if he doesn't want to get all this stuff. It sounds like he probably doesn't have a big spray or anything. He sounds like he needs to spray his plastic for his race bike. Right. So here's what I was going to say. Which is going to crash anyway. I'm hoping so his answer about? comes in cans. Yeah. Right. But here is, so I would, first of all, stay away from metallics because you can't say Candy blue from the auto parts store. <laughs> right. No, but, <laughs> but what I'm saying, though, but here's the funny part, though. With, with, that, with that Spray Max 2K, they are now Amazon starting to sell like two and four packs for like 60 bucks. Box, right okay and that's that's a decent amount of paint i yeah. think i actually painted my silver bike i painted the thing but i used the 2k spray max because I, I i bought it for something else and i had it that silver bike yeah it's gorgeous yeah and i mean so, it looks fucking fantastic right. and so here's the thing yeah so if that guy with the race bike yeah. you could buy shitty krylon colors of paint yeah for five bucks yeah and and like do what i told you sand it clean right. it with the spray you still you're still cleaning and you're still doing the proper mm-hmm. setup because 90 percent of a good paint job is prep of course and then you know learning how to spray but anyways um you could spray with the whatever krylon something whatever right. mix match doesn't fucking matter but then get two or three cans of that fucking spray max mm-hmm. 
and you hit it with a nice little tack coat. Next thing, but that seals the gas in, and it makes that cheap paint into fucking oh, automotive paint. Really? 100%. Well, that's like, I, I bought that gallon of the Summit Urethane Clear Coat. Right. Well, it doesn't matter what's underneath it. That's just for color, right? Yeah, right. yeah. You can paint it with fucking... So the clear coat's going to make it look deep and nice. And yep. hard. And here's the thing. And super hard. So you squirt it with two, like a, a one coat of like a, a tooth coat of clear. Right. Then hit it with a nice fat coat of clear. Okay. Then you take 600 or 800, well, I'd go even 800, and you wet sand that, right? right? Yeah. And then you hit it with a third coat. Okay. 90% of the time, I don't even have to buff it. It looks like it lays down, especially, really? well, if I use my actual sprayer and I use the thing, right. I use this stuff called the Glamour, it's a car show Glamour coat. So it's, you can lay it thicker. It's okay. like the final coat. All right. And it like auto levels. And wow. it is fucking ridiculous. Like, okay. I mean, and then if you buff that, yeah. then you get that like, holy shit, that's a four inch right. deep fucking paint job. Wow. Yeah. So paint's come a long way. And the thing is, is so, so I was buying House of Color and paying a, like $130 a quart for like the good color yeah. that I've used on bikes. Oh, red is super expensive. All of it. My race bike. Oh, so, I couldn't believe. And how I'm not saying this because obviously I don't give a shit if you buy stuff from Summit or not. I love right. the company I work right. for, but I'm not a salesman, right? Right. But I will say this: even like so, my discount's stupid. But even without a discount, yeah, the Summit Racing's paint. I think the pints are like twenty eight dollars. That's great. And the paint is good paint. That's fantastic. Like the glamour clear yeah. is fucking good, and the colors are fucking amazing. Like. Yeah. We had um we had a guy come in. So he, if somebody had to go out and buy a sprayer to have like seriously, I want to buy a sprayer. I want to buy one sprayer. I might do, I might do two bikes. I might do two sets of tins and done for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. What sprayer should they buy? Any of the turbine sprayers. Okay. I would like the the Fuji sprayers. There's I mean like if you look up a turbine sprayer, you'll hear most of the companies are really good. Okay. There's a couple that are made here in the states, but look on and how much is it going to set you back? Don't buy them new. New, they're like thirteen hundred bucks. Oh! But if you, you know, you find a used one, I paid two fifty for mine and had like okay. an hour of use on it. All right. But here's the cool part. All right. As long as you're not the original buyer, yeah, you will never not be able to sell it for exactly what you paid for okay. it if you don't fuck it up. Good to know. So keep some lacquer thinner. Anytime yeah. you're done with anything, clean Just the whole through. fucking thing out. Yeah. Be careful um, because there are you can once you have the turbine sprayer you can get different guns okay that go with it it has to be it's not just HLV it, it, HVLP it's not just that it has to be turbine sprayer because okay. then it uses a different pressures and all that kind of stuff but I've bought some smaller ones they're bigger than an airbrush but they're smaller than the big pot okay. for like just yeah. fill in colors right. and stuff and they're just a gravity cup sprayer yeah gravity okay. cup but yeah. they were from China. Yeah. And so immediately before I ever used it, I replaced every fucking O-ring in it because as soon as you put lacquer thinner on it, they just turn into balloons and yeah. squirt out of everything. Yeah, they, they literally yeah. leak everywhere. Right. Yeah. So, but the, the gun itself, once I replaced those, flawless. And now, Fantastic. Like, like on the K100, that's going to be Tom's. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all the lettering and stuff was painted with those small. It looks amazing. It. Yeah. It does. The, the, work, like, the work that that product put out yeah. is stunning. Yep. And it I got to really do... Good. I just accepted a helmet. So my buddy, uh, you know Ray Hong. I know Ray. His yep. brother Pierre is racing again. He's okay. racing Formula Ford this next year. And Wait, so his name is Pierre Hung? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pierre Card Hung. <laughs> but anyway, so he's he dropped his helmet off, so I got to do a six-color fucking helmet. Uh, he's an Asian up. guy named Pierre? Mm -hmm. That's fucking hilarious. Man. Yeah. Dude, he was... Uh, for six years in a row, he was a shifter cart champion of fucking everything. The dude can drive. I'm sure he can. So like this guy, like the the Formula Ford he's driving is somebody else's. Right. He's he's like he's the he's the driver for. And that's other guy's hung car. with an A. H A U N G. Yeah, yeah, it's hung with an A. Hung. It's hung with an A. Yeah. Right. How do you spell Great it? It's family. hung with an A. Great family though, man. That's super, that's super cool. I yeah. bet he can hang. Oh, I'm sure he can hung. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that's great yeah no that's I mean, so anyway so that's your thing if if he decides or if he has any questions right some just tell him to send in things if he he's has, a patreon member that's what i'm saying he's got access that's what i'm saying so if he it's has further great. questions if you yeah. want to know about if you're thinking about buying paint before you pull the trigger send us an email we'll get back to you yeah. and if it's that kind of a thing i'll just email you privately or something like nice. that but yeah whatever i love it that's that's fucking great yeah that's super cool <laughs> the uh i I'm going to tell you that that's been my weak link. I've painted several motorcycles, mm. and they all end up black. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> yeah, they all end up the the color black. that like if you didn't the bodywork has to be flawless for black paint. Unless well, no, it's just like but a flat see, black. there was a thing years no, ago that uh, Rust-Oleum sold that was called Hammerite. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you can't and fuck it up. Everything that I painted. 
I was just like, fuck. And I'd get the silver or the like the gunmetal hammerite, and I'd paint it with hammerite. And people are like, that looks cool. Have you and seen? I'm like, the, wow, that's what I was going for. Uh, Have you seen the new? I think it's fucking Krylon. It's commercial. the new like it's the turbo fucking sprayers. So the cans are like 24 inches tall, and when they hit the spray fan, it shoots a 24 inch line of paint out what? at fucking all so velocity. You can paint a house with it. Like like dude, they're painting cars like these yeah. kids like the drift cars. Yeah, yeah. and it's like. And the whole fucking car's painted. I saw the one shot. Krylon that might as well be called like you know, get arrested yeah. because it's got the, the the twistable tips, so you can rotate the tips to be like cut yeah. sideways, slant, oval. So you could be like you could be out tagging with just one can. Yeah, you could go out and well, tag a whole what, bridge with one can. There's a dude. I'm, I'm not a big graf- like. I, I appreciate graffiti. I don't hate it or anything, no. but I'm, I don't write, so I'm, it's not my favorite thing to look at. But occasionally these dudes come up on on YouTube from France or whatever. Yeah, and he's this dude that like modifies shit. Like he took a spray nozzle and then put five hoses. Yeah. and then strapped them to his fingertips so like he could just go like this and paint with his fingers, or he'll have okay. like two cans going into one nozzle so that it combines the two colors at one time and shit. It's really fucking better cool, living man. through fucking mushrooms. <laughs> yeah, right. That's all that is right there, man. That's Silas. I've been working for you. Oh, you're telling me I wasn't even watching paint videos. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Graham Smith. Sup gents. Remember our friend, the newly hired CF Moto tech. Yeah. 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 All right. It's our CF Moto tech chiming in from Canada. Hell yeah. C A N A D A. Take off to the great white north. Take off. It's B-W-A-R-U-N. a beauty way to go. B-W-A-R-U-N. Beer run. All right. Two questions. What do you guys think of the Moto Guzzi Norje or Norje GTV8 2014? Fucking, I'll tell you straight up. I love the bike. Mm-hmm. I know you love the bike. Every Norje is a beautiful bike. Yep. The Norje is Italy's favorite police bike. Yep. <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah, it is. You're right, I you're fucking right. guarantee it. I just wouldn't have that was not the first thing that oh, came to my mind, but okay. it's fucking you're right. If not, you absolutely positively have to chase down a Ferrari in the yeah. Alps, you're good. <laughs> oh, you're, good. <laughs> you're good, my friend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Every R eleven hundred RTP, you're like, oh, okay. Oh yeah. Here comes a Norje. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I had a, I had a Norje and it was in law enforcement white. Oh, yeah. With the detachable hard bags. And I was on my schlep back in the day <laughs> when my... When they're, my not, they're not magical. When my shop was in Mentor, oh, if yeah. you're not from Ohio, and I lived in Avon Lake, and it's a goddamn solid 75-mile burn. Oh, yeah. 75-mile-an-hour burn. And I left my house. On the worst highway ever. It is, it's just straight. Yeah. Right? And so I was motoring about, you know, as I do. I had just come through Dead Man's Curve, mm-hmm. as you do, and at exiting Dead Man's Curve, a fella next to me showed up on something that I would like to call a V-twin powered sport bike. It was red, so I'm pretty sure I know where it came from. Mm-hmm. And it made the noise, and he, and he went past me. And because I was going to work, I had the windshield in the up position, and I was, um, I was what they call sport touring right Mm -hmm. i was sitting upright i had on something resembling a bell staff jacket Mm -hmm. it may have even been waxed right and i was like okay and the guy rolls past me and i might have been going 80 ish we went back and forth until i was going no shit 135 miles an hour but unlike him I was sitting upright in extreme comfort, comfort. listening to NPR. And he Checking was, your coffee if you could sip it. Yeah. And he oh, was yeah. in maximum attack mode, right. right? On whatever, you know, Desmodronic powered thing he was on. And when I, you know, this went on for some while. And he decided that it wasn't worth it. But I decided, fuck it. If there's not a helicopter behind me now, there probably won't be one with any time soon, so I'm just going to rub it in. So I did not back out of the throttle, and I just stayed at way the fuck over legal speed limits mm-hmm. at 135 Allegedly. miles an hour. Allegedly. And the bike Allegedly. was very happy to do it. And then the low fuel light came on. <laughs> 
Turns out you are going to go through some dinosaurs at that velocity. Oh, yeah. And I had been going about 17 or 18 miles at this point Mm. at that velocity. So 17 or 18 miles at well over 125 miles an hour. That's three gallons gone right there. Fucking A it is. (laughs) And so... I was like, oh, oh, shit, I don't think I'm going to make it to the shop because I had another five or six miles to get to the shop. And so I was like, ah, oh, maybe I better pull over. I, I have been going through it, and I haven't really been looking at the gas gauge. So rather than run out of gas on the way to the shop, I should probably pull off at this exit and, mm. and, and get some gas. And so as I made the right and I leaned the motorcycle over to exit the ramp, the motor stopped running. Oh, shit. Because now, you know, I'm in third gear and I'm leaned over to the right. What did you do? And the motor quit running. Now, my immediate response was, oh, I cooked it. (laughs) (laughs) You know, like like going 135 miles an hour for over 10 miles, all the oil escaped through the tailpipe Mm -hmm. because that happens Mm -hmm. on motorcycles. And now that I'm slowed down and all the oil's gone back to places it's not running at maximum pressure, there's not enough oil to go to the lubrication parts because that happens. When you take away half of the engine's oil pressure, if you only have half as much oil as you're supposed to, some of the parts that are supposed to get oiled don't get oiled. Mm -hmm. And that's when motors seize. And when people say, like, I was going 100 and I wasn't having a problem, but I slowed down to 50, the motor seized. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's how it works. So I made the turn. And uh, the motor quit. And uh, fortunately, I looked up and the light was a very stale red. And I just fucking rolled through the intersection to the gas station. And I rolled through the intersection, gave it a quick look both ways, rolled through the intersection to the gas station, pulled in the gas station, opened up the gas tank, and like the ghosts of gas pass (laughs) escaped from my gas tank because I was, in fact, at the bottom of a Moto Guzzi Norge's gas tank, which I thought there was no bottom to a Moto Guzzi <laughs> Norge's gas tank because they have a lot of gas. And so I'm sitting there and I'm putting all the gasoline into the Moto Guzzi and, you know, 87 octane because I only want the best because mm-hmm. that's all I ever put in my bikes. Right. The dude pulls up on the Ducati. He's like, what the fuck? <laughs> and I went, and he goes, I've never seen a BMW go that fast. And I went, it's not a BMW. Right. And he goes, Yes, it is. And I went, no, it fucking says Moto Guzzi on the gas tank. And the cylinders are wrong. And he goes, did the cylinders look he goes, Moto what? Oh, yeah. He rides a Ducati yeah. and he does not acknowledge the existence of a brand called Moto Guzzi. Yep. And I want to punch his fucking Italian ticket right there. Mm. But I put the rest of the seven and a half gallons of gas in my bike, <laughs> right? And you could just hear the heat coming out of it. Like, <laughs> my gas was going in acting as a ticking? supplement. Oh, a, a Moto Guzzi 1200 is not a, uh, an overly cooled machine. No, no there's no extra cooling happening no. there. It's all just God's cooling. And you know what? I put that gas in and that gas was just absorbing all the heat out of the motor. And it's ah, tick tock, tick tock. And there's noises coming from a catalytic converter in the back somewhere. Yeah. And it was great. And the dude's like, that's a really fast motorcycle. Huh. And I was like, well, I know yours is faster. Mm. And he goes, I wasn't willing to find out. Huh. Because there's that idea. And it's like 135 is 135. Well, and I've, I've done 185. That's because every mile over 120, a Ducati requires $2,000 worth of maintenance. <laughs> <laughs> you know what you reminded me of? Fuck, man. You know how you described yourself sitting upright? Yeah. How is the only way to sit on a BV500? Because when I... When there I, is no sport mode. No, but when I passed that dude that one morning on a Harley... There, there and is he only one mode. When he was Ergonomically trying, correct. Right. And you look like... You look like... You look like it's a... perfect posture. Well, you look like a sign. You like a scooterist. Like, like, you literally look like an animation, yeah. like a drawing. A drawing of a scooterist. You're like... <laughs> But anyways, the I same passed, way with the door, Jay. I passed that guy on yeah. the fucking on the Sportster yeah. in all the tucks. Yeah. But I was in BV five hundred like oh, mode. Oh, <laughs> Ahoy. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a member I told the yeah. story and I got to the stoplight. He was like, What is that? And I was like a thing. He goes, Why would you get a scooter? And he's look because I'm like, I'm gay, dude. <laughs> <laughs> get with the program, yeah. man. Uh, it was so good. I have uh, <laughs> <laughs> when I got the when I got the Norie back to the shop, <laughs> I got the Norie back to the shop. I was kind of like, man, you know what? Like, 
I'd always been the guy. I like the Grizzo. Mm-hmm. I like the Grizzo. I've never fallen for the Norje. I just never, ever, the Norje never appealed to me because mm-hmm. it's all plastic. It looks like an overgrown PC 800. Yeah. Right? It looks like a BMW R1100 RTP. Very much right? so. It does. But at that moment, I was like, I finally figured it out. If you need to chase a Ferrari across all of Europe, you need a fucking Norje. Did you uh, did you do like the blue and yellow uh, like lo- like checker bar- board kind of thing on the <laughs> no, back? No, I mean, and, and I mean, or green and yellow. God right? is my witness. This is not a bike that I owned. Oh, okay. This is a bike that I was servicing. Gotcha. And I was doing an extended <laughs> test drive on. <laughs> Hopefully, the dude's not listening. <laughs> He's like, Statue of limitations is long gone by. <laughs> right. Yeah. I did have a tick after that. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, the valves valve seemed a little loose. It was fine. No, I, I, we did the valves after that. Right. Oh, but, okay. but, but I will tell you, that's nice. Like that bike had 24,000 miles on it. Oh, yeah. It was well broken in. Mm. And now it was speed tested. Yeah. Including the tires. Right. So it was, it was straight up okay. You, you are really a solid guy. You go out of your way. <laughs> You go to the next level to make sure people are satisfied. Uh, I got That's pulled what... over in Lakewood for 118 miles an hour. <laughs> yeah. And I told the guy, I was like, look, the guy who brought this into my shop complained of a death wobble at 110. Just trying to service it. And he's a cop. Ah. So what yeah. am I supposed to do? Right. He complains about a death wobble at 110, and he's one of yours. Right. So am I supposed to not drive it at 110? Right. What happened? I got a. I got a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I wrote a couple of letters and I got the ticket taken away. Oh, okay. Yeah. I wrote a couple of tastefully worded letters and the ticket disappeared. You made the mistake of telling him who your buddy was. He was like, fuck Frank. <laughs> no, <laughs> ticket. I, I, was, I was honestly, I was baiting him with information to be like, when he asks for the name of the owner of the vehicle, yeah. then I'm not getting a ticket. Right, right. But he didn't lean into it. He just wrote me the ticket because the ticket was more important to him than making fun of the, making fun of the officer. So, you know, and because a ticket for that speed is a good ticket. Oh, yeah. Right. But he let me continue. He let me proceed gaily forward. Which is that alone, because yeah. anytime over, you're over 100, usually that's a, you're going with me, sir. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And he, I think he wrote me at 95 See, that or was something. Cool. That's know. what that cop did for me, yeah. or that state trooper did for me. There when, you go. When I went in front of that, uh, yeah. that truck. He was like, I could give you a ticket for this, but then you'd have to yeah. go to court. And I was like, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I, I've, I've ridden a lot of baggers, like, you know, that, K, that K1200 GT, and, like, those bikes are fast. Yeah. That was easily a 185-mile-an-hour bike, and it was, not, it was not wheezing. And that had bags on it. That was mm-hmm. a luggage bike. And it's very fast. It's a very, very fast bike. I think the Nordia is a great bike. So to our podcast listeners, it's like, okay, about it. But here's the one thing I just want you to know. For podcast listeners out there, the eight valve motor, the twelve hundred cc Moto Guzzi eight valve motor, are, exists in two formats. It exists in a roller rocker, and what roller rocker means is exactly what you think it is. The cams are actuated by rollers, rollers that are on the lifters, and the rollers on the cams. Yeah, I know it's fucking weird, isn't it? <laughs> the rollers on the cams go up and down, and roller rocker shit is money that mm-hmm. shit is dope roller rockers are great now let's talk about tappets not so much mm. so flat tappets no bueno mm. so it turns out that on the flat tappet motors so a lot of these earlier eight valve motors in the Moto Guzzi v12 had flat tappets and what they did is they had these hilarious little adorable little push rods that were about an inch long <laughs> And the little push rods went up and down, up and down, up and down. No, an inch (laughs) long, not even by Cleveland Moto standards. But these little push rods would go up and down, up and down, up and down, riding on the diamond-like coating on the cam. Mm. Now, here's something that I learned about diamond-like coatings. They're not. (laughs) Do you know what's like a diamond? A diamond. Yeah. Do you know what's like a diamond? Nothing. Just a diamond. Oh, yeah. So if you're buying something that says it's a diamond-like coating... It has a lifespan. Iron oxide. Well, but it turns out the diamond-like coating that was on all these motors on their cams did not right. diamond. They turned blue and they ex- suffered extreme heat failures and they would die. So Moto Guzzi offered a fucking ridiculously good program where if you could prove through the use of a mechanic that your motor had the pushrod motor, the tappet, the flat tappet motor, 
if your motor had that push rod system, that they would send you at no charge the conversion kit to convert your motor to roller rockers. Mm-hmm. Now that, my friend, is like going from a Honda motor to a F1 Honda motor. Right. That's some cool shit. Now, after a certain year, 2014-ish, 15, all of the motors had had the um, roller rocker system, and that will last forever. Don't worry about it. You own one. You're great. If your motorcycle engine has the flat tappet or the little push rods, right, the older system, check it. Go to the internet, learn as much as you can about it before you buy it. I remember, I remember when that all started to go on. I was yeah. really up on Adventure Rider because yeah. the same motor also is in the Stelvio. Stelvio, and like people were like losing their, they were losing their mind. Minds. They were selling Stelvios for three thousand dollars. Yeah, and it was the it, best value in motorcycles. Yeah, people were sucking them up oh, and yeah. then doing the fucking roller rocker yeah. conversion and then having a two hundred thousand two hundred thousand mile bike. Absolutely, all long. Yeah. absolutely. Yeah, and we did so many of them at the shop. I can't, I can't even tell you how many fucking. How many hours did they? What? How many service hours was that? It paid. I. Th- I think I think we paid out six hours on that. I think so, yeah, we got it was paid a, six it, hours. It was a pretty good job. Oh, it's a right? giant job. Yeah. It's an awful job. And I think we got paid for six and I could get it down to about eight hours. But it's a terrible job. There's a lot going on. Yeah. And it, it is one of the reasons why, if you ask me, I say that which the factory hath married, let no man ever right. fucking disjoint. Because you will never get that motor together and have it be leak free because as long as the bottom half of the motor has done 93 heat cycles, 93,000 yeah. heat cycles, and the new part of the motor has done zero, you are going to be chasing your tail with non-homogeneous metals expanding and contracting at different rates. So you're going to have to take that valve cover off. You're going to have to re-snug those heads or just over wear. and over and over again. Like certain, But you're things. not. You're not going to do it, and it's going to leak. Yeah. I promise you, you're not going to do it, and it's going to fucking leak. Well, and this thing about this, like, no and then matter just be glad it's air cooled. How mu- how precise the manufacturing process is for those parts? Yeah. Once those parts have like spun around yeah. two billion times, yeah. Like, and you introduce a new right commercially perfect part, you've already you're already fucked to begin with. Yes, you are. You know, like, absolutely. No matter how many right. heat cycles, you're yeah. still fucked anyways. How about the bolts? How about the studs that go through the heads to hold the heads on? That have been stretched? Studs stretch like a motherfucker. And anybody who's ever built a motor knows that you don't just tighten it once. Dude, the first time I ever rebuilt a fucking Vespa motor, I was convinced they sent me the wrong parts. I'm looking at the fucking studs and I'm like, it's a half inch shorter. This must be (laughs) fucking wrong. (laughs) (laughs) No, that's how much they stretch. Yeah. Yeah. Like that is a thing. Like when people are like, well, you know, I built my own motor, and I'm like, so how many times did you retorque everything after heat cycle? Dude, you told what? me that. I would have fucked my first one up, because I was like, I was all impressed. I'm like, yeah, I rebuilt it, because you were at the mentor shop, yeah. and it was like, you had just got there, whatever, and I was like, yeah, blah, blah. and you were like, so uh, did, you re- did you redo the bolt? How many? How long have you ridden it? I was like, oh, I got about an hour on it. Go redo those bolts. Sure enough, I got back. I could tighten hands. They were like, finger tight. Yeah, fuck yeah. yeah Every dude. time I built a motor, like, yep. like for years and years and years, racing two strokes, like that was always the thing is you're like, you'd slap a top end down in the pits between races and you'd be like, okay, there you go. Fire it up, go. And you're like, okay, that's good. But now it comes back in. This is not the time to have a beverage. Mm-mm. This is the time to retorque everything. When it's hot. And it goes, and you, exactly, you'll chase those threads all the way down and then you do five or six more heat cycles, bring it back in and hit it again. It is amazing how much shit stretches. Yeah. It, people, it, it blows my mind to this day that people are like, oh, yeah, I put a new top end on my whatever. And I'm like, cool. Did you retorque everything after five heat cycles? Huh? Yep. Well, yeah, that's why it's fucking leaking everywhere now. That's or, why there's water coolant going all over my fucking shop floor. To yeah. your point, some bolts are single use. Oh, yep. uh, yeah, they fucking sure like as shit my are. my belt tensioner on right. the Dodge, Yeah. when I first got it off, yeah. I couldn't get it to go back in. And, and I talked to Ryan, and Ryan's like, yeah, dude, that's a single that's use a bolt. That's a one time use bolt because when you torque it to spec it stretches and that's all you're yep, getting that's the, loctite yeah yeah when that bolt stretches that is the definition of you don't put loctite here right because when it deforms now it can't go either way mm-hmm. that is a one-time use bolt how many times tom have you seen people using bolts that we know are one-time use bolts? oh yeah multiple fucking yep. 
times. Yeah. A well, fucking because lot. if it doesn't say yeah. one use only on the bolt, it's not printed on the fucking bolt. And I honestly, promise you. honestly, if you printed it on the bolt, it wouldn't matter. People still wouldn't it read. It wouldn't fucking matter. It just wouldn't oh. matter. I, but to that effect, he's talking about that. As long as you check and you make sure, if you have a Nor J and it has less than fifteen thousand miles on it, right? Eh, have fun, go ride it, right? Just, just go ride it. If you, you're not going to find a dealer. I can't think of one dealer. Talk to Enzo Miller at Cadre Cycle down in Cincinnati. I believe Enzo Miller is a quality enough human being that he will do. A roller rocker conversion. If you have accidentally found your way into a tappet based, push rod based uh, uh, eight valve motor, wouldn't they like? Wouldn't like if you didn't know whether or not it was done, and you didn't want to rip into it, mm-hmm. wouldn't they know by the serial internet? Number? No, no, and that's oh, that's an excellent point. <laughs> Moto Guzzi put a list out of serial numbers. Mm-hmm. And we were like, "Yay, great!" There's a list of serial numbers, and we started checking the bikes we had in our inventory. Right? They were wrong. Oh, they didn't good. work. So you know, best of intentions, the road mm-hmm. to hell is paved. But what could possibly go wrong? Right. Uh, here's what went wrong: they were wrong. So um, guys were like, "We had situations where Moto Guzzi was like, I'm denying the warranty claim because the deal was the customer had to pay for the labor, but the parts were free. But right. the parts were like eleven hundred dollars, twelve hundred dollars. Right, right. So you rock on." And you're going to pay me for six hours of labor. That's cool. But we had Guzzi denying claims. And I had to send Guzzi pictures of the bike and the VIN and everything together. What could they deny? Like if it, you open it up and it has fucking like non-roller because rockers. They decided that it was only the VINs between, you know, 1137 so and that guy's fuck. Fuck you, dude. And so we were sending them pictures going, well, this bike is clearly outside of your fucking parameters of what is covered. Right. And it clearly, here's the valve cover off, right? Here's the valve cover off. Here's the head off. These are clearly not roller rockers. Right. So this guy deserves to have a fucking top end. And to make problems worse, there were four different kits. Mm. And you can't tell what kit you need until you get the fucking head off. And that's one th- that that's probably the most important tip that I'm giving you right now. From the outside of the motor, you cannot tell which one of the four kits you need. Huh. So you have to do exploratory surgery and get into the head to find out which one of A, B, C, or D, which kit you need what, to do the job. What was that different between the four sets of heads? Do you know? A lot. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. It was different stages of manufacturing. So maybe this one had a part from this company and this one had a part from that uh, manufacturer. Yeah. They weren't interchangeable Mm -hmm. and like the vast majority of the ones we done were like the c and d kits we didn't run across too many a and b kits but we had thought like oh we're gonna be sneaky we're gonna pre-file some of these warranty claims so we have these head kits on hand standing by and it turns out every dealer in america did that so that moto guzzi usa ran out of head kits well that wasn't exactly that current year motorcycle we're talking about bikes that were already six eight seven years old right so they had to go back and remanufacture parts, mm. <gasps> different kits to go on. It was a fucking nightmare, man. I'm telling you. So, but, but like you said, Stelvios, Norjays, and Gritzos, all of a sudden, if it had the letter 8V after it, was like, nope, that's cursed. Yep. Can't have that. And meanwhile, there were guys on the thing saying like, this is, I don't know what to do. I'm so heartbroken. This was my favorite motorcycle I've ever owned. And now I have to sell it because I'll never trust it again. Right. And then some guys like uh, my PM do. I'm, I'm more than willing to come and buy that. Uh, uh, there's an Australian Absolutely. guy that that is a Moto Guzzi guy, and yeah. like you know, everybody in Moto Guzzi culture knows the guy who. But he's talking about. It, he's like, yeah, yeah. Well, I had one with that the uh, the you know the push rods, and then I got 186 thousand miles on mine in Australian 118 degree Fahrenheit weather right. across the goddamn country. It's not and dusty you know or anything either. Anyway. And you know what? I'm okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you don't need to get on it. But what we learned here at our shop when we took them apart was the less miles the bikes had on them, the more the diamond-like coating was coming off. Because what uh, happens is the milkshake. You guys ever heard about the milkshake? No, but it probably hardens from the heat cycle. Here's the milkshake. This is the weird thing about milkshakes. Milkshake is what happens when you park a bike in October or November, like you do, because mm-hmm. we all do that. You park the bike. And then the bike sits there, and it's got the oil in it that you changed back in April, mm-hmm. right? 
So you got that oil in there that's been in there since April. You park it in like October and November. And then condensation happens because at night it's like 32 degrees. And in the daytime, it's like 52 degrees. Mm -hmm. So condensation happens. And uh, the condensation that's normally on the outside of your beer mug is on the inside of your engine. And that condensation is water. And water's mixing with your oil. And you know when water mixes with your oil, well, it floats, right? And so you end up, when you take your dipstick out, you have this stuff that looks like a milkshake. It's kind of a light brown color and it's frothy, right? Well, now the problem is um, if you run a motorcycle long enough, it'll cook all that milkshake out of there, right? But if you don't run the motorcycle long enough, it'll go all the way up to your valve train, right? Yep. And instead of being good, beautiful, delicious oil that's lubricating all the expensive parts in the top, it's the frothy part of the water-based milkshake. Right. And turns out water is a fucking shit lubricant. And that's what takes the diamond-like coating off the cams. So in bikes that we found here in America that were like an eight-year-old bike, but it only had like 4,000 miles on it, but it had changed oil every 3,000 miles, which means in eight years it had two oil changes. Mm -hmm. We were seeing milkshake. We were draining the oil out of these bikes, and there was a goddamn inch of water on the top of the oil. Well, guess what? Those are the bikes that failed. The guy in Australia that's put fucking 12,000, 14,000 miles a year on his bike, no milkshake. The other thing that contributes to that is firing it up for short periods of time. Yeah. One so of the worst I, things ever. I just, you know, I started it up, I let it run for five minutes, and I shut it off. I just wanted to make sure it was running, you know. Probably. You didn't throw it into a heat cycle and evaporate all that water out of the oil. Right. If you're going to start it and not run it for 30 minutes, in the wintertime, don't, do don't fucking start it. I'd rather see you leave it in Jay Leno stasis condition, right, than to fire it up for five or ten minutes because John's exactly right. All you're doing is adding more. There's, there's, um, there were, at Summit, we had this this guy come in. They were doing, um, it was a, a live stream, so I was just a camera guy, but I got to hear what they were talking about. And this guy was like, he's a vintage car collector, like, you know, high end, super high end, like Jaguars and shit like that, right? Mm -hmm. And so he said that one of the worst things that he finds especially with like these older Jaguars and everything is these guys that are collectors. Mm -hmm. And so every, like they don't really drive them. So every year or whatever, once or twice a year, they'll start them for 15 minutes or whatever. And so he said like, you know, when they get these cars, cause he does museum quality complete. Like when they get a car, it ends up being like numbers, perfect, like wow. million dollar cars. Right. Yeah. He said that when they take apart cars that have like, like 200,000 miles and like this and that, that those engines are easier to repair because the other ones that were started just in these collections, um, because exactly what John's talking about, they don't heat cycle them so the, the moisture doesn't leave. All the stuff that's usually submit, or submerged under oil is all pitted yep. and fucked. And, like it's, it's, and in some of these cars, there's, those parts don't exist. And so like now, and then to the point that once it starts to get pitted, it compromises the integrity of the, the actual metal because Absolutely. now shit's sneaking into yeah. all the porous sections and stuff. I mean, when you start your car up and you see the water dripping out of the tailpipe, yep. right. well, guess what? A lot of that's also get, you know in the bottom end of your motor. You got blow-by, you got all You're kinds of stuff. You're mating surfaces in your engine until your motor gets up to running operational temperature. All you're doing is operating an air pump that is taking air in out of the atmosphere squishing it hard enough to extract the water out of it, <laughs> right? Yeah. Burn off the available air, and the water goes where? Into your crankcase. Well, there's a reason why your usually your operating temperature is above 212 degrees. Exactly. Because right. once, you get up to, all the bad shit. once you get up to 240 yeah. degrees or 250 degrees, yeah. you're evaporating, all the water is all the evaporating out of the motor. Yep. Uh, I talked to a customer today that was one of those people that was like, well, Renee told me if I went out and started my bike every 30 days, I wouldn't need to buy a battery tender. No, no, no. Renee said, if you don't buy a battery tender, you're going to have to go out and start your bike every 30 days and run it for 30 minutes whilst stroking the throttle. Yep. Right. You only heard the part of the story you wanted to hear. Yep. But because you didn't want to buy a $48 battery tender... You now have a dead battery, a motor full of water, right? It will not start. And I assure you, when we do drop the oil out of it, it's going to have four fucking ounces of water in it. 
And that means that your cam is going to be rusty. Your valve's going to be rusty. Shit's not going to be moving the way the shit should be moving. Mm. And it's, it's ultimately going to be an ugly situation. Because you chose to hear, Renee told me to go out and start my bike every 30 days. Mm. Uh, that's not how you do it. That's just not how you do it. You run a fucking motor until the steam, until, the, until what's coming out the tailpipe is fucking clear. And you know, based on your watch, that you've gotten at least 30 minutes on this motor of stroking it up and down through the rev range. Then you've cooked the motor enough to be like, okay, at least that oil that's in there doesn't right. have any more shit. In it. Right. So you're fine. You're absolutely fine. That's, that's, that's how you do it. Nothing yeah. wrong with that. No. Yeah. Not that hard. No, it's really not that fucking hard. But yet, when I every time I start up a customer's bike, and it's a mosquito fogger in my shop for yeah. fucking 15 minutes, guess what I know? Yeah. I know they've been out there like, well, I think I'm just going to go out and start my bike today. Yeah. And they start their bike for exactly fucking five minutes. Yeah. Here's the other thing, too. This is a pretty simple thing. Yeah. Um, you know, it doesn't matter how much preparation you did or didn't do, but in the spring, when you go to start your bike, Open your gas tank and flash a flashlight down in it and see if the gas looks like gas. Or if it, <laughs> No, I'm serious. Because here's the thing. If it looks like shit, don't try to start the bike. Because now you're sucking all this shit that is collected into your fucking gas tank yeah. all through your fuel system, and you're going to create a lot more problems. Where if you just you wasted fucking three gallons of gas, drained it, maybe shot a little more and cleaned the tank out... You might save yourself a little bit of time. If I don't have a flashlight, can I use a candle? Yeah, definitely a lighter. <laughs> Fuel tank with torch. Yes. Yes. Yeah. With yeah. If you're looking at the Haynes manual, yeah. inspect fuel tank with torch. Yeah. The British it, listener is going to get a big kick out of yeah, that. Yeah. 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 That's that's a real thing. They were not aware that we're stupid and had to come up with like a whole fucking flashlight name. <laughs> Because we're special. Yeah. Because we're special. We were the special kids. Uh, we were. We were exactly. Like, think the about it. Kids. They they got it right though. It, it's just an upgraded torch. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's I mean, clearly. <laughs> yeah. Right. When it, when you when you need to light a fire, a torch will do. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Okay, John. The uh, so the uh, the the long the long and short of it is. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's that's cool. I mean, maintain your shit. That's that's a really good deal. Uh, the dude, uh, the dude who sent us the message about the uh, that whole like uh, I'm going out to get the Vaseline to keep my Har Harley Davidson from rusting. Oh yeah. After railing the guy's wife, um, the the guy that sent that sent that to our podcast literally as a Patreon mm -hmm. after Chris had told the joke. No, I. Told oh, you it. told the joke. You told then the joke. Then Chris told it? a better joke that was much shorter. So he said, "So yeah. it's as old as the found on the road dead joke." Oh yeah. Yeah, and that's the one where the cop comes across the uh the girl who's you know naked on the side of the road and she has a motorcycle helmet covering her privates uh. and and says that you know well i don't know how she got the entire biker up in there but yeah oh so, yeah yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a, yeah ouch uh so i more about you know going on we have got probably coming up for us here in town we are in a state of we have two more major events we have the distinguished gentleman's ride coming up when's that that is going to be in may oh my goodness right exactly so we have the dgr ride coming up in may and then it's straight into heavy duty preparations for mid ohio yeah and i know that we were all talking before the podcast started about like we got all these bikes we got to sell. Yeah. And we do have all these bikes we got to sell. There's a shit ton of bikes we got to sell. And um, I've got the two spaces for vending at Mid-Ohio. Absolutely. Um, we're going to be doing all the normal shenanigans that we do for Distinguished Gentleman's Ride because we have been doing this for 12 years and we love it and it's a lot of fun. But now we got Sean Noel helping us. Yeah. So he's going to rub his influence on it and it'll be even better. Because that's good. Because I've been doing it for a very long time, and I'm glad to have some new blood getting involved. Uh, yeah, so I got herpetitis on my phone because of what we were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> that showed up in my Facebook. <laughs> Don't go. ever talk about things with your phone near you mm. because that will happen. Uh, that was a, uh, oh yeah, the, the an adventure rider. Uh, one of my pet peeves, you guys have all heard before, Cycle World Magazine, Adventure Rider, 
these things that are like, we're hanging on to the idea of journalism. So we're reporting about motorcycles that don't exist. So here's the thing. Last, when you were saying yeah. that last time, yeah, I might have been in a, like after several tokes of uh, special, special sauce. Stuff, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were yelling at me and I'm like, I'm sorry. I just brought the article. No, no, <laughs> I'm not yelling at you. No, I know now. I'm yelling but, about lazy journalists. But on that day, I was fairly convinced that you were mad at me. No, I'm mad like, at oh, people. I'm, I'm mad at people who are confusing a promotional story about a product that doesn't exist right, right. with news. With act, and the thing is, is that they have credentials. Coming to America. Yeah. It's not coming to America. It wasn't coming to America seven years ago. It wasn't coming to America three years ago. You keep reporting about the actions of a Chinese company. But you can tell, though, that there's some kind of propaganda pushing it because it's really weird that like eight big fucking like newspaper articles or whatever come out at the I, same fucking I, time. I wonder if there's some, money, a check right? yeah, involved. Of course there is. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's something they used to call yellow journalism. No, but as right? we talked about it that but day. But now if you say yellow journalism, it means something totally, totally different. different. Yeah. But I'm just saying like, yeah. Like, you know, this is actively happening. Like, right now, somebody's feeling the need to spend money to do that. So, the, we're talking about a, a, a 500cc sidecar rig. Oh, that thing, yeah. Okay? A, si a sidecar rig being advertised as being like a, huh, okay, I'm going to help you guys. If you've seen a green sidecar rig that is apparently 500cc sidecar rig on ADV Rider or whatever, any of the usual fucking scumbags that put shit up there, right, and, and have these unqualified stories... Because they were crawling around the internet and they found something that, oh, that looks interesting. I'm going to make a whole story about it. Okay. Don't tell people that it's a thing. Don't tell people it's coming. Don't tell people it's available. Don't tell people they can order one unless you've made one fucking phone call. Look, my standards are pretty fucking low. One fucking phone call. Because I tried to call that company. Oh, yeah. They do not have a single phone number listed on their fucking website. And we all they have, emailed them. They have okay. a form that you can fill out. And apparently, if they're feeling like it, they'll call you back or they'll email you back. And I even tempted them. Did with you the, fill that out? I did. And I even tempted them saying, like, I was about to purchase a year all. I was signing the paperwork <gasps> and I saw your bike and I said, you know. <gasps> I think oh. this looks better. If somebody oh. could get back to me, I'd like to spend some money. Oh. And they did. No, of course no, not. No, they didn't, did they? <laughs> no. <Baller>. Right. right. <laughs> so, I went to their Google. I used Google. Yeah. And I Google mapped them. I know where their world headquarters is. I could walk you down there. It's a short walk away from one of my favorite pinball parlors. Hmm. Right? I could walk you to their front fucking door. Do you know what's not on their Google listing? That thing? A phone number. Oh, that, yeah. Do you know what's not on their Google listing for Google Maps? A phone number. Right. Can you call them? You cannot call them. Hmm. I went to their website. I went to their Google Maps website. It is angry customer after angry customer after angry customer. These... <clears throat> People will not call me back. Oh, well, they, they added a uh, adventure bike since last week. Oh, I look at what's that? Promise mutiny. you the mutiny, right? That's been there for a while. Oh, I don't but but anyway, but here's the thing. I have asked a number of people because if you don't think being a motorcycle shop in Cleveland, Ohio, did I mention I have the word Cleveland in the name of my oh, yeah. shop? Oh, yeah. And so I mentioned you're selling bikes now. My Phil. name is Cleveland Moto. Yeah. I have had people calling me about this particular company for going on 18 years, oh. okay? And they're calling me, asking me when they can put their deposit in to buy that sidecar rig. And what I tell them is, contact the manufacturer. I'm very, I'm very diplomatic. Contact the manufacturer. But then they contact me back because, you see, I have a phone and I pick it up. And my phone number's on my website. Oh, look, you can become a dealer. Oh, of course you can. I have a phone number on my Google Maps page. Mm-hmm. I have an email address, and I answer them, as many of you know. Now, here's the weird fucking thing. People are calling me saying, I tried to order one of these, and nobody will call me back. Well, why the fuck are you calling me? Here's your hat, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Proceed to fucking it. <laughs> I'll put a hole in it for you for free, <laughs> all right? So here's the point. If you're a journalist... Stop reporting on shit people can't buy. 
but it's the new electric 500. It's going to have a 500 mile range and a 300 mile an hour top speed. Great. Can I buy it? Then shut the fuck up. Go report on something that exists. Report on a graduating licensing program. Report on MotoGo, teaching children how to work on motorcycles. Report on all kinds of cool shit that exists in the world that you're not reporting on right. because you're going for some low-hanging bullshit fruit about the latest fake fucking monkey bike or fake fucking Chinese Honda Hunter Cub or the fake fucking Honda Grom or the fake whatever Chinese shit that you're... But is only sold in one neighborhood in Malaysia. Right? Right? And has no intentions of ever being DOT or NHTSA approved. Because until it's DOT and NHTSA approved, you might as well be talking about the Easter Bunny fighting a fucking unicorn. Because neither one of them goddamn exist. I'm so fucking sick of everybody saying it's motorcycle journalism when it's not. It's bullshit propaganda. <clears throat> Arguing about shit that doesn't exist. Right is a waste of everybody's fucking time. And publishing stories about shit that doesn't exist tells me that I am now going to associate your name as a journalist with a fountain, a spewing fountain of bullshit. <laughs> and if I ever meet you at a trade show, I'm going to say, oh, it's you. I read your article, or articles, plural, about motorcycles that nobody can fucking buy mm. and don't have a distributor to associate... When somebody says coming to America and you don't tell me the name of the distributor who's bringing it in, fuck you. You know what I find interesting about some of these photos? Yeah. Look at the sign behind that rider. Yeah, it is not in English. That's not in Cleveland. No, it's I can not in Cleveland. You. <laughs> I can assure you that sign does not exist in English. You in, haven't been to Ruma? And right. Ruma I, House of Noodle? Oh, by the way. When I'm I look the, at this, this yeah. person riding that motorcycle mm -hmm. that says Cleveland on it. She's not in Cleveland. Uh, did you notice that the exhaust on that is a parallel twin going into a parallel twin exhaust? Yeah. That's not what that motorcycle is. That Cleveland logo on the tank is Photoshopped. Uh, okay. They're putting their logo using Photoshop onto a motorcycle that they are not even slightly remotely off. Uh, you're right. That's, they don't that's Cleveland right there. But. Shh, no, no. The background is Cleveland. Yeah. Okay. I'll give you that. But, uh, yeah, but, anyway. but, but wait, not wait. to get into too fucking fine a point on it, but that's the same motorcycle that we saw. Not one, but two of them crack the rear axles on. Well, and that one. At 35 miles an hour. It's pretty interesting that the yeah. one that they have up there for like 7000 bucks mm -hmm. is on Marketplace for $2,300 for the last 14 <laughs> months, sold by the company yeah. itself, yeah. and it says prototype. Yeah, the, the license plates, uh, we've never had a three-inch wide or three-inch tall 12 inch wide license plate in Cleveland on the front of a motorcycle. You see what I'm saying? In the history of our life, right? So the point is, this is all bullshit. So the, the point right. is, yeah. just wait for the Triumph because it looks better and actually has a distribution network. Right, right. You can buy it. You, <laughs> you can, can buy, buy a Street Triumph. 400. Right. You can buy a Street 400 for almost no money. Exactly. Well, Why that, would you buy this? That's pictures <laughs> of the bike from where it was originally built. That's the point. The point is oh, they're, yeah. they're claiming, they're trying to claim that this particular motorcycle is built in Cleveland. You, you can, Here's I'm the pretty sure they're not exporting them to if the country. Any <laughs> one of our podcast listeners at the $300 level, if you're a podcast listener at the $300 level, I will take you to this place and we will knock on the door. Nobody will answer. I will let you, I will lift you up so you can look in the windows <laughs> and you will see the factory that is not a factory mm -hmm. that is building these motorcycles in Cleveland that isn't building these motorcycles in Cleveland yet has managed to get the attention of every press outlet in the city of Cleveland to say how they're going to bring a thousand jobs to Cleveland building these bikes in Cleveland. They have never employed in their factory, which my by the way, my, my shop is bigger than their factory, that their factory has never employed more than eight or 12 people that I'm aware of. Right. And they've never done more than open up a box and take the parts out of a box and put them into the parts from another box and then send it out. Right. Right. Um, that's not a factory. That's not made in Cleveland. That is Etsy assembled by your grandma. Right of miscellaneous components and now sold as being one well, unitized And here's thing. the crazy part. Yeah. And so besides all the bullshit magazines that we talked about, right. 
I've also seen them in like Cleveland Economic Magazine. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. About yeah. How they're they're going to regenerate so the land when and, they were under their first name. Right. They got a whole lot of press about how they're going to bring a thousand jobs back to Cleveland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there was going to be a motorcycle factory in Cleveland. Anybody see that motorcycle factory? No. Anybody see those union jobs? Well, they're still building the foundry. No. Right. Exactly. (laughs) For real. Okay. So then when they decided, oops, Chinese bikes didn't pay off, burned our fingers on that one, and they went to electric, Mm -hmm. right? They're doing the exact same thing again with the land, right? So this guy's just a shyster. And like, I don't understand how people don't see it. They're like, oh, wow. It's the third time this guy's brought in some bullshit Because journalists are thirsty and lazy. Yeah, apparently. Right? Because (laughs) finding out something awful that's happening and investigating it and fixing it is hard. There's there's a reason. But (laughs) promoting somebody's fake ass bullshit company, you know, promoting a charlatan who says he's going to do things he can't possibly do. Wait, I'm I'm, wait. I lost my. Where am I talking about again? (laughs) Oh shit! Where was I? Promoting a charlatan. Fuck! I lost it again. Promoting a charlatan who lies about every. Fuck. Let him ah, go. shit. I lost it. <laughs> What'd you lose? I You're... lost the train of thought because I keep thinking about just like people that aren't really doing anything, but they're just lying about things they're not actually doing. That's what I'm saying. This That's guy's a... such a fucking yeah. snake, man. Like everything about this has been a snake. All the bikes you've ever seen are snakes and they're all for It's sale. just this whole idea of like, can I get a title with that? Right. Well, but you can get a you can get a motor manufacturer's certificate of origin, but I don't need think that. About I that. need a think, title. Think about this, okay? So back in the day, like, hey, could, John, is that bike DOT approved? Uh, this bike is made with DOT parts or DOT approved design parts. Oh, oh, so it's DOT approved then? But don't you think, like, it could be? <laughs> But dude, seriously, like back in the day when somebody wrote an article, it'd have to be approved. They'd check the footnotes and all yeah, this shit, right? Yeah, back when, hey, back when hey, journalism. Hey, so don't, how can like... Back when the fourth estate... But hold on. So we're not even talking about Cycle World or anything like that. We're talking about an economic magazine that's like Cleveland Economics. Forbes. Forbes, thank you. Forbes. And, and like yeah. they didn't even do a bring the check to say that this amazing thing that's going to re-revolutionize the motorcycle industry in Ohio right. is not able to be ridden on the road. Right. Like, don't you think that'd be like number A... <laughs> right like, so i've got this idea that we're going to bring back and it's going to revolutionize entertainment and physical fitness and uh it's going to get kids off their thumb powered devices mm-hmm. it's going to eliminate tiktok completely we're going to get kids out in the yard playing again you think that's a good idea lawn darts jarts jarts, jarts. Yeah. we're bringing jarts back yeah. so we're going to bring back jarts um, now they're completely DOT I don't know approved. How I knew you were going there. Oh, that yeah. was fucking weird. Oh, yeah, you know that's that. That was some fucking. <laughs> we were deleted. keyed in on that like, shit. I could have fucking picked anything. Dude, we were on it. <laughs> we could have said slip and slides. Yeah, anything. We could have said anything from Whammo. Oh yeah, what the right. Fuck, man. But straight up, we were on the same yeah. thing. I want to bring back charts. Yeah. I want to bring back charts. Yeah. The most dangerous game. Yeah. yeah. So sleepy. Yeah. You want to know why that doesn't happen anymore? Huh. The Telecommunications Act of 1996, which is why I dropped out of journalism school. Because, yeah. <laughs> because there's a difference between print and truth. Right. Well, that's why Dan Rather truth hates everyone. Dan Rather. Or entertainment. Oh, yeah. He comes out. He comes hard on everybody. But, and it's but I just, amazing. I got to say, in our culture where we, as the motorcycle consuming public, the people who are just there like, hey, man, tell me about some cool new shit. Right. Just please tell me about some cool new shit. I will listen. Look, here's a video of them making a kickstand. Ah, oh boy. A custom billet aluminum kickstand. Okay. Hey, you know, as much grief as we gave hey. Triumph about those leaked videos of, of the dirt bike, mm-hmm. yeah. they actually created the whole bike. Like, oh, it's, it's there. out it there exists. now. It's, it exists. exists. It absolutely exists. So if they're going to create videos of this, you know, here's let's a- see the Lenhai they're going to produce. <laughs> <laughs> but, but here's the thing I'm telling you about. I would rather watch a 20 minute video that describes in great detail the difference between oh, ADV and ADV 160. He's he's going to he's already writing Between an ADV 160 and ADV 150. I I I would like to have a 15 minute tutorial about why a Honda ADV 160 is Look, different hand painting and frame. or better oh. than an ADV 150. Um, we know the guy. We actually we're good friends with the guy who got contracted to repaint them. Yeah, 
after they came into America from somewhere else that wasn't America. I can't imagine because they're built in America. But there was a company here in America that got hired to repaint them because the paint was substandard. So they had to be repainted. So when they opened up the boxes, somebody decided the paint wasn't good enough. They had to be repainted. So they were repainted locally by the person who didn't paint them the first time. But that's weird because if they were made in America, why wouldn't you just have the company that painted them in America paint right. them right this, the second time? I don't, I don't know. It's fucking weird, you know? Hey, but don't ask too many questions. That'll make your brain hurt. Yeah, this, yeah don't ask guy. too many questions. Just, just <laughs> better to just fucking buy it. Dude, is this dude front an emo band or fucking run a Don't motorcycle? even start don't about... Start. Look, I'm telling you, it's going to go better for you if you just attack the product. Okay. Don't attack the person. Yeah. Attack the product. Yeah. Because if you attack the product... I mean, Chevron's are cheaper. Just yeah. and they're just as legal. The product, <laughs> right? Just just look at the product and the product alone. Yeah, no, it's. I have no problem telling you that that what he's standing in is not a factory, because I've been in factories my whole life. I've been in factories. That's I know what a setup. factory looks like. That's a prep. And that was just a bunch of pallet shelving. Well, they bought a CMC machine, but that's they're not one CNC machine can make a kickstand and. <clears throat> they no. <laughs> Look, man. It was my nephew's got a three D printer. Call, it's what they call a propo. My three. My nephew's got a three D printer. That shit's not high speed, low drag. Yeah. If you want to show me at least like, show me one. Show me one dude on a Bridgeport making one thing. Show me chips. I want to see chips. I want to see mountains of chips. Yeah. You right. show me mountains of fucking chips. I'm a happy guy. I know you're making some shit. But if your floor is properly swept and shiny, you ain't making shit. Right. Oh look, phone number. I know about I know about manufacturing. Oh yeah, there is yeah. a number. They there. added a phone number. We know where that one goes. Yep. Yep. Hey, if you guys want to find out more information, since this is a publicly available that website, that is publicly available. What is Go on ahead. that TV is only it's, for uh, our consumption. I don't know. It's two one six two three six thirty one eleven, and it's a uh, it's Land Moto. <clears throat> Wait a second. Are you familiar with um, dot, dot com? Know. Are you no, familiar yeah, with dot com? I've, I've heard about that. Yeah. Are you familiar with dot work? Yeah. Have you heard of dot biz? Yes. Have you heard of dot .io? Yes, and I've heard of dot so, .us. So like Iowa? And dot, uh, what's the other one? <laughs> uh, I've, well, there's a lot of different ones. There's yeah. a lot of different ones. So landmoto.io. There you go. Another one. So they're celebrating another manufacturer. British by Indian Ocean Territory. Say so who? IO is for... The British Indian... Chagos... Archipelago assigned to the British Indian Ocean Territory. Oh, I.O. Indian you mean Ocean. offshore? Yeah. It has become a generic Why domain. Why would they not even fucking put a fake... Web? You can link... Like, come on, Dan. You know this better than anybody. You could fucking... I'm, I am fucking website yeah, illiterate. And I, I would know you. how to fucking buy a website yeah. and redirect a link. I got a bunch of them. It's not even hard to do. I got do. a bunch of them. Yeah. It's real easy to do. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. I promise you guys this. I'm just saying... If you if you're if you're listening to this podcast for the very first time and you want to know what gets our fucking ire up. Yeah, right. Right? It's shit in one hand and wish in the other. Well, you know right? what? The motorcycle industry is uh, it's it's a pretty hard place to get loyalty and to see charlatans like this fuck over people that It is. Well, like if this is going to be your first motorcycle experience and it's some right. douchebag fucking thing that doesn't work, right. we're not going to see them later on riding anything else. Like this, right. they might be done. Right. And it's because yeah. of this fucking schemer. And it's because <laughs> we know people here that gave money, that spent money. Yeah. Those aren't the real people getting screwed. Right. I worked for a plastics company, and that plastics company did make some cool stuff, but it was never, ever going to be profitable. The way that company survived and the way the people who were making money from that company <laughs> got paid was for new investment, capital <sighs> sucking in. Yeah. It was perpetual, like, Hey, we have this proprietary thing and we have this new thing. And you know what? You really want to get bought in here because we're doing this in mold coding yep. and this is going to revolutionize the industry. You get it on the ground floor IPO and you know, just, just, you know, and the people are like, you know what? I'll throw some money at that. And like, also they had an in with some people that the Legacy's Emerald Legacy, like yeah. it was weird. It was um, weird. one of the people that was going to invest in this, because he thought this was a great business opportunity because the article that was in, in Forbes Cleveland yeah. 
came into my shop and he's like, oh, I'm really excited because it's going to be great. If you guys started, when are you guys going to start carrying these? Why don't you carry these yet? Why do you only carry, why do you only carry zero electric motorcycles? Why aren't you carrying this motorcycle that's built in your fucking city? I, it might not even be about selling the bikes. It's just about getting the investment. And I said, dude, I'm not carrying that because I cannot legally sell it to you as a motorcycle. I can sell it to you as a trail bike, an off-road use only vehicle, the same way I could sell you a bicycle or a chainsaw or anything. But I can't sell it to you as an on-road vehicle, which is kind of my business. And the second thing is I have a business dealer's license that says that if somebody believes that I've misled them, that they can file a claim, they can they can cause problems for my dealership. So in my history with this particular company, we have had to buy back their products because they were insufficient to the needs of my consumers, that they weren't what they were advertised to be. So my fingers got burned and I said, never again, I'm not going to go there. And the guy was like, yeah, but they're made in America. And I was like, prove it. If you're going to invest your money in that company based on made in America, prove it. Because if you want to talk about made in America, I'm your bitch. I will go toe to toe with you on anything that's made in America. And I will do a deep dive and find out where every part of that made in America motherfucker comes from. But saying that this particular thing is made in America, it's not. And until you can show me where the components for it are made in America, or even all the components for it are assembled in America, because I know people that do that too, right? Suggesting, though, that this is going to create any jobs in Cleveland outside of the people who are actually in the building bolting the shit together is a fucking lie. Dude, and watching right. this thing that John just played, my yeah. Buscadero rides better than this. Of course it thing. does. Absolutely, positively. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It literally doesn't matter. Right? So, so is this track, this indoor track here in, no- yep. <laughs> here in I can, Cleveland? I can take you to it. Cool. We can go down there. Let's go. And actually, we've got two of our guys, two of our young men, <laughs> our young men, two of our young customers who are riding SSRs that bought SSRs from us are racing at that track. Nice. Oh, cool. All winter long. And uh, the one kid got the SSR 140. Fuck. I, I rode that thing around. <laughs> like when I prepped it, I took it out and I was like, Jesus fucking Christ. And like, you know. Like an SSR 125, but with literally two times as much horsepower. Well, think about what Grom Beardo has. Yeah. He's got uh, that 190. Yeah. That thing looks like a fucking CRF one. This one, when I fired it up, the second I fired it up, oh, I was like, this is a something. very angry little motorcycle. <laughs> right? <clears throat> and this is a kid who weighs 86 pounds soaking wet. Yeah. And he's pit bike racing in that building. And you see, it's beautiful. It's indoors. It's, yeah. it's, it's heated up to about 42 degrees, 50 degrees. Is that at the rubber There's ball? no wind blowing. Yeah. What's that? It's got to be right by uh, Hoppin' Frog Shit. Brewery, too. Yeah, yeah that's by so my work. This is an Akron. Yeah, that's the uh, Soapbox Derby Downs. So uh, the point being, for the podcast listeners at home who can't see the shit that's going on the screen right now because yeah. they're pointing the wrong way, they don't get to see the shit, the point is very simple. If somebody's offering you something that sounds too good to be true, take five fucking minutes and investigate it. I'm going to promise you that the level of sophistication in charlatanism and scams in the United States is so weak. The game is so fucking weak. Hey, Tom, where are Doc Martin boots made? Uh, well, once they moved to China. Today, where are Doc Martin boots China. made? China. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Hey, John, hmm. where's the average American Where's the flag? Buick Envision made? <laughs> where's the, the Buick, Buick Envision? You know, the Buick is actually one of the, is the, I think, the biggest car brand in China. Yep, and since it is like the most popular, and since most ni- desirable, since like 1997, yeah. yep, a lot of Buicks, mm-hmm. these Buick SUVs and stuff, are made in China. Yeah, I think they're part. Of, are, they may or may not GM, be part of it's a GM thing. G Lee GM, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I was kind of blown away. I'm like, it, it's fucking shocking. Uh, you know, the other thing too is that yeah. we have about three plants in this country that can smelt aluminum. Mm-hmm. I was reading up on it. Elko is still doing it. But we're almost to the point where not only have we lost all the, the manufacturing, we've lost even the basic oh, yeah. production. I mean, like, we're well, when, 
if you go back 100 years, if you wanted aluminum, it only came from one place. Yeah. Yeah. Ford is building a, what, $11 billion plant in Bowling Green to build ne- mm-hmm. the next generation hybrids and, yep. and batteries because yep. the Chips, chips right. Act a well, couple of years ago. You know what's, but it has taken them. I've been by there three times now over the past five right. years. It has taken them that long to clear the land and put a structure yeah. in place. <laughs> Benelli is owned by a Chinese company. Yeah. Right? So, you know, I don't care how many vowels are in the name. I don't care about the story about, like, you know, uh, if you drink bourbon, you know about Centauri. Yep. Right? The, the, I assure you, if you spend more than five minutes looking, you'll be able to find it pretty easily. Yeah. You'll be able to find it pretty quickly. Um, don't let somebody sell you a bill of goods. I mean, that's that's I've, what I hope it comes down to. There, there's a phrase I've used several times with mm-hmm. several different people in my travels. American companies only make money. Yeah. They don't make a product. Yeah, it's just, <clears throat> yeah. They make money. Right. And they've and, offshored and they've offshored to make sure they're still making everything money. else. Right. Right. The only thing they, the only thing they make is money. The only thing they want to make is money. Mm-hmm. So did you guys hear about the Toyota thing? So you know, obviously Toyota's not going full bore into electric vehicles. That's right. And they have their thing, it's called the one six ninety rule. Yeah, what? I saw oh, that. Oh yeah. Out. Yeah, it's really pretty interesting. Lay it on me. So basically, they say that one completely electric car is equal to six plug-in hybrids, which is equal to ninety just hybrids. Mm-hmm. Okay. Wow. And then, and then after, what is it? After like ten years or yeah. something, the ninety hybrids over their life. I'm sorry, the ninety hybrids over their lifetime is thirty-seven times greater. Or the, is the, thirty-seven the, times less carbon than less carbon one than electric one electric vehicle. vehicle. So I, for the raw materials yeah. that go into one yeah. all-electric vehicle. You'd be way better off just building every car, turning every car into a hybrid. And I believe that if you're an American car enthusiast and you have a Kid Rock flag in the back of your <laughs> Chevy, <laughs> your right. your dog squatted piece of shit Chevy truck, yeah. right, <laughs> right, okay, or your Cadillac, you'll know that right now, the 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 most desirable trucks in America have a hybrid powertrain. Yep. Just think of it. When it breaks down, you can still run it, ho- drive it home on electric. <laughs> so the most, the most desirable trucks in the United States market right now do not have uh, eleven hundred pounds of batteries underneath them. No. They have one relatively small battery, mm-hmm. in addition to the twelve volt battery that owns the car. And everyone's decided that that's the secret sauce to get you to a oh, thirty two yeah. mile per gallon Escalade. Yeah, which then satisfies the EPA general standards rule. Right. Right. That makes makes sure that the manufacturer is putting out an average vehicle miles per gallon rating that keeps them with the compliant area. Because the old way was, if your truck is poorly fuel efficient, you make it bigger. Mm-hmm. And there's a volumetric equivalency between the size of the vehicle, its height, its weight, its length, its mass, its overall size, that says... If your vehicle only gets 20 miles per gallon, it must be at least this tall, this wide, this big to ac- to accommodate this many cubic feet of space. And that's why you see trucks that have hoods that are six fucking feet tall. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's why you see things like my fucking F-150 that are like, if you open the hood, I could fit all of us under the hood. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there's also a 5.0 liter V8 motor in there. There's a bunch of dead space that nobody's using for anything other than to fill up a void that says it has to be this big to get the EPA rating right. because it is a scale that is saying if your vehicle gets 20 MPG, it must occupy 7,000 cubic feet of space, right. whatever it is. That's a silly way to make the laws. Yeah. It is really a silly way to make the laws, especially when I know, since I spent like one day in an aerodynamic class, <laughs> that if I took my truck and I did four things to it aerodynamically, there's a guy who does on the internet. Mm-hmm. He takes a brand new F-150 truck and he makes four or five modifications to it that you can do with cardboard. And he takes it from 20 MPG to 29 MPG. That's an appreciable difference in the amount of money I'm spending in my oh, yeah. vehicle per year. And he can do that with cardboard. But that violates the whole rule of the mass of the external shape of the was, vehicle. As, there is some, oh, go ahead. Tim. Oh, I was going to say, because Sleepy, your Dodge Ram, mm-hmm. right, is a perfect example of a truck that was actually built fairly well aerodynamically because they have not changed that design. 
I used to rent constantly. I used to rent yeah. the big Dodge Ram huh? four door truck yes. to go to Barber and back. Yes. And we all, all know stuff. it. Yeah. And it has like an eight speed ZF transmission that gets almost 30 miles a gallon with a trailer hauling flat out. Not mine. Not his. <laughs> Not yours. No, <laughs> Not yours, mine. Yours, yours right. the old one. Right. No, 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 no. Because no. this thing literally has an eight I speed. I rented one last year eight speed with an eight speed. My truck now has a 10 speed. Yeah. And my truck will pull 20 if I drive like my foot is connected to my wallet. And that Silverado that I, my, I re- my, just rented only got averaged about 14. Yeah, right. mine gets 13.5 right, 13, five right yeah. now in the cold <laughs> weather. So there's no there's no 30 in it. it. Last year I, I rented, getting, I was last year I rented a brand new Dodge well, truck. And that's with a brand new motor. Yeah. yeah. So. I rented a brand new Dodge truck last year that had about 5,000 miles on it. Yeah. And the best I could get it to pull was 21. I was, get, I was getting 23, 25. With nothing in it. Yeah. 21 was about its... It, about its game but you turn that into a hybrid you oh, put yeah. a very small hybrid system in there which toyota's done actually pretty well uh, I, I was this you talk small hybrid system yeah. small hybrid system there yep. was a whole plan yep. it was like look we're going to go 42 volt yep. system the truck is going to be all 42 volt yep. all the electronics on the truck is going to be 42 volt right. we're going to have uh, a sizable 42 volt battery yep. that's going to be hooked to a controller mm-hmm. the starter isn't going to have a yep. spray it's going to be run all no, the time be a DC it's going to be a cog belt from the starter to the motor <laughs> yeah so yep. that's going to spin it's either going to make electricity or it's going to start the motor or, or add power it's just going to yep. and that's all it does you it's, mean it's super a starter rater it's a starter Star- rater. Rater. <laughs> it's the simplest way that you could easiest most reliable way you yeah. could make a hybrid and it's it's called a Dodge Ram E Tech motor. Exactly, yeah. E Tech so motor. I thought, I thought of a I thought of a good like six thousand dollar modification. I could probably get about thirty five miles to the gallon on my truck. It <laughs> it's bullshit. It's called the Scoot Bread. <laughs> Scoot Bread. So what you do is you ah! sell me a BV four hundred. <laughs> And I put it on a thing with a lever, and once I get up the highway speed, I just drop just that drop bitch it, down. And the bitch pushes. Uh, it just yeah, pushes. Just gets you going. Oh, oh, I'm all that? for that type of unitization. Like, yeah. why can't you have, like, you have a front-wheel drive car. Right. Well, why can't I just take out the dumb axle that's in the rear, replace it with a with a hybrid, you know, a hybrid axle that that's, has a motor in it yeah. or two motors in it yeah. and a battery in the trunk and just give it a little bit, you know. Now well, it bumps you up. I mean, EV West kind of sells those components right. if you want to build it yourself. I'm hell. How about something that goes in your trailer, hits your receiver? Oh, that's, it's that's just called a, that's called a it's an electric motor with a one wheel that will like I help you, you take off. I think U-Haul rents those. It's a trailer. That's but it also pushes. Yeah. Well, yeah. It, well, I'm just saying it, it, it's, just, it's not even a trailer. A it fits into your receiver. <laughs> it looks like some Whoville fucking car with exactly. a big wheel yeah, sticking out of the back. It's one wheel. Right, it's I mean, one wheel. If it just gives you right. some push when you're taking right. off and whatever, I don't know. <laughs> but I mean, the whole, the whole con, the whole basic, the platform. What we're all talking about here is the same thing. <laughs> when I drive my motorcycles, some some guy came in and he's like, he goes, he's looking at one of my bikes that I had for sale, and he goes, so what kind of mileage does it get? And he's an old fucker, yeah. right? He's just one of these old guys. He wanted to use my shop like a museum. Tough for a while. buying bikes again? Like, <laughs> ah. And so he's like. He goes, well, what kind of miles does it get? I said, who fucking cares? Yeah. And he goes, what? And I said, who fucking cares? I said, if my motorcycle, hand to God, if my motorcycle got 12 miles to the gallon, I'd still ride it. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it's fucking fun. Yeah. Right? Because it's fun. We're talking about renting electric dirt bikes for $150 for two hours. $150 $150 is enough gas to get me a goddamn California on any motorcycle I own, right? <laughs> so if if I'm being honest with you, a motorcycle that gets me in, in, in my particular world that I live in, my, my showroom is full of shit that gets 90 miles per gallon. And you go, yeah, it's a little sissy fucking 125. Bullshit. I got 300s and 400s that go 90 plus miles an hour that get over 80 miles per gallon. Mm. That's where technology is right now. That's what ceramic line barrels and pistons get you mm. and good smart fuel efficiency, fuel injection systems. But I sell a whole fucking world of shit get, that gets 80 miles per gallon. You take a CV carburetor off of a 70 mile per gallon vehicle and you put a pumper fucking Mycuni or some cool shit on it, you're going to go from 80 miles per gallon to about 35 miles per gallon. But the fun factor yeah. is going to go way up, right. right? 
well, but now you're getting shitty mileage. No, 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 no. My truck gets shitty mileage. You're getting smiles per gallon. I'm getting smiles. Yeah, I'm getting smiles <laughs> per gallon. Said it before I could. Fuck yeah, I'm getting smiles per gallon. And that is exactly what it is. That's literally it. I promise you, Merritt's fucking Hyundai with my, her Hyundai is not a hybrid. No. It's a car. It has four doors. It has a six-speed manual gearbox. And my fucking wife, God bless her, somehow squeezes 42 miles per gallon out of that thing. Oh, absolutely. That's what I've always said. And you it's don't a even sedan. Need hybrid. Get these little Ford, like a, a Nissan Versa. Oh, now getting, that's crazy. Yeah, it's yeah. ridiculous. It's yeah. a 1.6 liter four-cylinder tiny little car. It's, yeah. It's almost 50 miles a gallon, non-hybrid. Yeah, but the wife's car is a four-door Korean touring sedan. Sure. Right? I mean, my hunk of shit gets 38, 40 miles per gallon. And, and when I drive her car, I'm like, honestly, this is a fucking solid car. It's a seven-year-old Hyundai. To Hyundai's, Korean, to Hyundai's credit. Her, Korean touring sedan. Mine is a pile of shit yeah. now. Not my fault. Right. Like, I got hit, and yeah. a, deer, a deer jumped through the front of my car. Didn't fuck it up too bad, but enough. But so I, 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 I changed the oil and stuff, but it's yeah. not like I'm out there, like, maintaining the right. car perfectly. Yeah. So my back brakes got to be, like, pizza cutters, basically. Like, there was metal scraping on and metal. your rear brakes are drums i'm assuming no no they're discs, oh, they're discs? so the disc oh the disc was about three millimeters thick oh my when i took it off <laughs> nice and then the pads that were no longer pads is it an automatic no it's, it's a man. It's manual cbt yeah. oh. so it's like supposed to be adjusting the rear brakes every time you operate the rear brake no that's man that was, no, that's does. drum brakes oh it does i learned about that okay too. all right all so right. but anyways my rotors yeah. that the new ones were six millimeters wide the old the old ones I took off were less than three. They were just little oh, pizza they were cutters. They were way thin. But to Hyundai's credit, yeah, for whatever, every bolt came out without any fucking issues. And how many miles were on the car? Eighty some thousand. Eighty thousand miles yeah. on the factory rotors. Yeah, yeah. If you own a Toyota <laughs> Tundra truck, yeah. as I did, that's a wish. Like yeah. you're like I think oh, I've, I did wow. pads. I did pads yeah. before, but I left yeah. the rotors. That's pretty cool, but, man. No, but you know what else yeah. I learned? That, so yeah. that was new to me. Yeah, is that it? The the brake piston. Yeah, you have to screw it in. Yes, because exactly it's what adjustable. you're talking about, yeah. it adjusts itself yeah. to keep your emergency brake yeah. right there. Right. I yeah. didn't know that. So the first time I'm squeezing this fucking thing, and I'm like, I will kill you. Like, why are you not going in? Do you know what's not in your owner's manual? That if you own a manual transmission car or even an automatic transmission car. To occasionally put your car in reverse, back down a very clear street or parking lot, and use your emergency brake, parking brake, to stop the vehicle. Oh, and that's what... Okay, do that once or twice. Because if you're in Cleveland and you do that, it's just going to break your emergency brake cable right? because yeah. you've never used it and, it's and corrosion has had it, yeah. and which you needed one anyway, so anyway, fix that. But anyway, do that, back up, put it in reverse, put it in reverse, and use the emergency brake to stop the car. Do it once or twice, and then put it in reverse and use your service brake. Now, is this like brake. when you're doing a J turn, like you're doing eighty? Ah, hold on, no. yeah. Okay, mm, back to that. All right, you're going to use your service brake, your regular foot brake, to stop the car a couple of times. Bop up, a couple of times, and now you're going to go out and you're going to back the car up two more times, maybe five, ten, fifteen miles an hour, and you're going to use your emergency brake again. So two e brakes, two service brakes, two e brakes. Now drive it down the street and stop at a red light. You're going to be shocked at how good your brakes work. Hmm. You're going to be shocked at how bad your brakes were before you just did that thing that you should be doing all the time. That all depends. I know. It all depends on what type of brake setup it you does. have. Because like a lot of cars have yep. e-brakes inside the hatch. Absolutely. With a disc brake on the outside. Absolutely. So yep. when you back up and hit it, mm -hmm. all you're doing is setting your e-brake. All you're doing is setting you're your You're not going to do anything right. for your caliper. Absolutely. Some, uh, and usually it's the ones where they turn in. Yep. Those are actually using the brake caliper oh, yeah. has a hydraulic way of acting, but it also has a mechanical way mechanical of acting. Mechanical star adjusters. And so yeah. that yeah, might work on those. Because I had to buy those. the $13 little cube that so you put on your fucking here's half inch ratchet. And you're, shh, the here. reason I tell you that is that this fellow. Unless you have old school, old school, where you just have drum, drum brakes. And those are star adjusters yeah, too. Yeah. Those are mechanical star adjusters. So the reason I'm telling you that is because for 95% of the people that are listening to this podcast, what I just gave you is going to either adjust your e-brake or adjust both your e-brake and your service brake. Mm -hmm. But here's what I can tell you. You probably haven't done that in a while. Mm -hmm. But if you listen to me and I told you to do that and you go out and do that, 
even just once every six months. I'm going to save you about a $600 repair if you don't do it for four years. Hmm. Because when I worked at the shop, that was one of our favorite ways to add about $600 onto the repair bill of anybody. Because I would be like, hey, are you aware that your rear brakes are barely working at all? Like when you're going down the and you're stopping, that it's about 99% front brake and about 1% rear brake because your rear brakes are so far out of adjustment. Hey, Mitch, go ahead and hit the, re- hit the brakes. Watch me spin your rear brakes mm. with my hand. Would you like me to fix that? It's about $600. Hmm. Meanwhile, if an owner of a vehicle just used their e-brake and did what I said, two e-brakes, two service brakes, two e-brakes occasionally, and, you know, if you're feeling super saucy, buy a can of fluid film and go underneath your vehicle once a year before the salt hits it and do that to all the brake linkages and or things. Eh, okay. It ain't going to hurt. You ain't going to hurt. But that's one of those strange things that I promise you, I've never worked on a car in this country where the brakes were correctly adjusted. Right, right. And, but, but, it, but it ain't one of those things that it says on your dashboard you should use your right. e-brake today because mm-hmm. most cars are automatic transmission and, you know, people don't use them. Right. Then yeah. there's the whole horse shit of like the Fords and stuff where it's electronic calipers and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you can't do a brake job because you don't have the computer. Uh, once your brakes wear down, like it, it, it has it, to reset. It, it has, you have to yeah. reset it. You right. have to re like, oh, it's fucked. We just bought a Bluetooth based OBD scanner and got some software that goes along with it to help us turn off service lights and various motorcycles that we work on for lack of a better term. Right. And, and yeah, we're finally getting to the point where enough, you know, kids have figured out ways to bypass. If you need an upgrade. Yeah. My, uh, my summit just had a couple of really good deals. And with my special deal type situation, oh. I can get you a pretty sick, like full on tablet. Yeah. yeah. Machine. for well, like, all these just work through a Samsung. Or, oh, you know, I know. Yeah. But th- this is like, th- these are badass. Like yeah. you could service everything, yeah. reset everything, things that you're not supposed to reset. Oh yeah. You can yeah. Reset, like all I can. Yeah. Ownership of motor vehicles, ownership of modern motor vehicles. 245. We're yeah. really kicking are we doing it. Good? Yeah. Ownership of modern motorcycles and stuff like that, that whole thing about like, I'm never going to own a motorcycle I can't service. Yeah. When people, I mean, when I was young growing up, I'll never. I already do. (laughs) I'll never own a motorcycle I can't service. Well, okay. That being said, I can change a fuel injector. Mm -hmm. And a fuel injector does go bad, but not that frequently. Mm. And they are a replaceable part and they're not that hard to change. Pretty fucking easy to change. And I can reset my throttle position sensor because I can disconnect the battery and reconnect it. So I can still work on my motorcycle. And if my ECU goes bad, I can throw it against the wall and I can buy a new one and I can install it myself. So I can still work on my motorcycle. So that idea of like, I'll never own a motorcycle I can't service. Well, yeah, you can. I mean, worst case scenario, you could always get a paint pen and paint the inside of the tread. <laughs> that's really cool. <laughs> that's pretty fucking cool. <laughs> I would rather spend $85 on a new fuel injector than $300 on a CV carburetor, Mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. 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 Right? I would rather do that. And that level of like, oh, shit, my fuel injector was jacked up. Yep. Yeah. It's a thing that happens. Yeah. And it's funny when we take a fuel injector out, we hook it to a battery and we throw electricity at it and we see the way it sprays or what, if it doesn't spray. If it doesn't spray. <laughs> I learned I, I, that, I, kit, that Kimco today. Yeah. I yeah. learned about fuel injectors with all eight of them being clogged of yeah. Yeah. gas Is coming it? through a fuel yeah. rail. So, yeah. I'm going to tell you, there, it hasn't made the motorcycles unserviceable. It no. really hasn't. They're still serviceable. They just if make it you, harder though. They make everything harder in some ways just to fuck Actually, with Actually, I disagree 100%. Yeah, well, I mean, hook it up to an OBD the, scanner yeah, and it tells it, you that your fuel injector's not working. The greatest, the greatest thing, invention when it came to fixing Vespas 
is the pads. The pads. And now that it's reliable. And if it's a Triumph or whatever, oh, yeah. then it's Same a straight point. up OBD2. So you plug it into oh. a Harbor Freight OBD2 yep. reader for $32. Right. And it tells you it's a P4010 oh, yeah. or whatever. And you're like, oh, that's a fuel injector, right? You know. Well, I'm just saying, but they still, but but like, what I'm saying is, is that in generally, you're taking a lot of shit off to get to that injector. It's not; they're making it still hard. No, no, you're thinking about your pickup truck, though. Yeah, you're thinking about your pickup truck. No, but on bikes? No, oh no, absolutely not. No, I'll tell you what. It's one. About, it's one eight millimeter bolt. Yeah. Let me you, think about. You, you take yeah, the, you're if it's a scooter, the off, you're no. Out. But if it's a scooter, you just pop not the a little cover off. Not I mean, a scooter. Not even. I'll change. I will change the fuel injector <laughs> in my Harley Davidson right now. One hundred and three cubic inch motor. I will change the fuel injector in that bike right now, and I won't even have to take off the air cleaner. We'll do it on my Africa Twin. Okay. Yeah. There's panels coming off. There's tanks. Getting yeah. Lifted. Okay. There's but that then sounds like a you problem. Hold on. Hold that on. sounds like a you problem. Hold on. Sleepy. <laughs> yeah. Same as you carbs. can take the two carburetors off of the Transalp. No, no. And I'll take the fuel injector out of your Africa Twin, and we'll see who's done first. <laughs> <laughs> not only I promise that, you. Not only that, I'm going to win. Not man. only that. Yeah. Not only that. You yeah. still have to service the fuel injector versus servicing the carburetor. Yeah. Yeah, right, right, right. So right, right, right. you go ahead and rebuild the two carburetors. I'll swap the fuel injector. Yeah. We'll see who's fastest. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I'll, I will literally. I, and you know what? Since like since since um, <clears throat> people got involved um, with time on their hands, mm-hmm. cheap people, I've got lists of websites that sell you rebuilt fuel injector yes. oh yeah because a fuel injector is nothing but a little electronic body 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 you just gotta replace the seals in it yeah huh. and so like you look at you're like oh this this bmw fuel injector for my you know r 1200 is 197 dollars but 73 websites are selling you this one that fits 73 motorcycles yeah for 32 bucks mm-hmm. but you got to send them your old one yeah yeah and you're like fuck yeah 32 bucks and I've replaced a hundred of those. Mm-hmm. And I've never had one that was bad. Like, it's shocking. The number of fuel injectors that I have changed just because I'm too lazy to properly fucking clean them. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, yeah. a fuel injector is literally just an electronic Windex bottle. Correct. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <It's> correct. <laughs> well, it's... <laughs> you know, well, Phil, that, ki- that Kim I was telling you about earlier. I said I got it. You know, the fuel injector was bad. I pulled one out of a, ki- out of a Buddy oh, 170. Yeah. And that's the other thing with fuel injectors. <laughs> You can be wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I literally pulled there's out of a little, buddy. There's a lot more windage. Oh, yeah. In a fuel injector than there is in a set of jets in a car. But, but, yeah. you know, I did find out how yeah. you could figure out you got the wrong ones. Oh. So they sent me when I originally bought the new ones from my Dodge. I put it in and it, yeah. I thought the thing was going to explode. And so then I took them out and I looked. And the old ones had four holes in the nozzle. And oh, the yeah. new ones well, had like 7,000 7, holes in the nozzle. And you're like, it's, <laughs> okay, it, this oops. might be doing something a little different here. Like, you know, guys well, like, oh, shit. Well, I'll just send you new ones. You can just keep those. Like, right, <laughs> and that should tell you a lot, too. Yeah. Yeah. When somebody's yeah. like, no, no, keep those. Yeah. Don't mail them back. Yeah. Oh, you were ripping me off. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime anybody tells you to keep something yeah. instead of shipping it back because they don't want to pay for the return shipping, <gasps> you ripped me off. You know, you know what I ended up doing? Uh. Um, I was so disappointed with them that all I used the new ones for were the O-rings. I cleaned yeah, the old ones myself, the, yeah, took them apart, the fixed yeah. them. I, absolutely. Yeah. And and I've done, we're all guilty of it. You know, there's the run water through them trick. There's mm. there's a hundred different tricks oh, yeah. about cleaning up your injectors. Great cleaner works great on everything. It works fucking fine. <laughs> oh, yeah. If you're willing to have the cancer and the torn up calluses sure, on your hands, yeah. whatever, it's cool. <laughs> the uh, But I, I am straight up, when anyone's like that, I was like, I will, I defy you. I've had a lot of weird bikes that have weird fuel injection, but it is straight up on Moto Guzzi's. It took me longer to undo the high pressure fuel connection. Yep. Mm-hmm. That weird fucking push the pin, pull the thing. You got to get those stupid. Did you yeah. get the yeah, little the, knobby uh, guys and all that? Oh shit. man, I got them yeah. all. I yeah. got them all. I got a whole set. Cause and I needed 50% one. of the time I'd still break them. Yeah. yeah right? right. Right. So, you know, push the, Push the tab, push it in, yeah. pull it, and they. It would take me longer to do that. That was a pain in the dick to get the tank off. Yeah. Than it was to actually change the injectors. All right, I'll and, give you that. I'll give you that. And and that's magical because too, when a fuel injector is not working great, the bike still goes down the road. Yeah, just sloppily. It's just not great. Yeah. And when you put a brand new fuel injector in, and the bike's like, "Hey, I'm back," 
you're like, that's pretty incredible. I mean, still, that's every, fucking great. I just, every time you go to the garage in the spring and you have your yeah. fuel injected bike and you hit it and it starts. Yes. It's yep. like, ah. Yep. Oh, man. The level of abuse, <laughs> I'm sorry, the level of neglect that apparently people that buy bikes from me can execute against a, a, a bike that wants to do nothing but make them happy. All right. A bike that wants to do nothing but make them happy. Tom took apart one that was three inches full of fucking mouse piss. Yep. Three inches full of mouse piss and mouse nests and the whole deal. And it had it, 600 miles on oh it. Oh, God. <laughs> Such. Is there a word that exists that's not only neglect but also abuse? Oh, I'm sure. Is it like, is it like you know, revenge neglecting something? It's called marriage. <laughs> it's hate neglecting. Boy, I want to make comments, but I don't know. Well, I was, seriously. I was, I I was going to say some things here, but There's no. neglect. Neglect, we know neglect. It's called the foster parent. Okay, yeah. There's <laughs> neglect, and then there's neglect with a healthy dose of abuse. That's marriage. Okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> so neglect and abuse. This bike had been marriaged hard. <laughs> Hard. <laughs> I'll drink to that. And in its 600 miles, it had been dropped at least 14, 15 times. Yep. Damn. By people that had never met. Oh, yeah. Right? <laughs> the bike had just been hate marriaged. Yeah. It was just so bad. It was so fucking bad. And when Tom pulled it, he's like, come back here and take a look at this. And he cleaned all the, the, the mouse shit out of it. Yeah. Right? And cleaned all that. I had never seen metal corroded by mouse piss <laughs> so equally and efficiently over the entire surface of the vehicle that I was like, wow, that's really a tribute to marriage, <laughs> right? It's fucking awful. It was so bad. But that being said, right? That's neglect and abuse. Yep. That's, that's straight up neglect. So did it fire and up? Abuse. Oh yeah. Bike runs like a top. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I Inside. mean, it's, you know, I, had to get, I had to go through all the things you usually do with a carburetor. Right. It still wanted it to be a bike. It still wanted to, it still wanted it's to a, run. It's a, it's a liter 150 motor with, with 600 the, the, the miles point, on it. The point being. If you threw that, a carb that, like, spray at it, it would run down the road. <laughs> but the level at which people that listen to the podcast don't realize. They're like, I listen to a motorcycle podcast. You listen to a motorcycle podcast. You're already kind of fucking a motorcycle weirdo <laughs> thing. This is not like some murder pro podcast or whatever that everyone listens to. These are fucking motorcycle well, weird if shit. If John farts properly, it can be a That's well, true. Okay, Burn the hairs you out of your fucking talk. nose. You're always over there gassing. But, <laughs> but, but I'm going to let you know that the world of motorcycle owners is dumber than you think it is. Oh, yeah. yeah. It is. It's <laughs> oh, dumber yeah. than you think it is. And I know that we... Have you ever been on Facebook? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I've been to Daytona. Hey, like, hey right. Phil. Like, yeah. Hey, Phil. How's that marketplace sales going? <laughs> Fuck that. Hey, is the front Fuck that. <laughs> Do I have a front bent frame on that that uh, scooter? Yeah, it might have oh, bent God. frame, Sleepy. Can I okay. test ride it? Yes, you can. <laughs> can I trade it for tattoos? <laughs> I, again now i know you said it has no title <laughs> right but does that mean i can't get a plate right exactly and the bent it, frame how bent is it yeah yeah the next the, the fact is we talked about this 15 podcasts ago if anybody has a better way to sell a bike yeah. mm -hmm. even if it involves nailing my dick to a board mm -hmm. i'm in I'm in. I will nail my dick to a board for something better than Facebook I mean, John, Marketplace. Can we go in on a bike? I just want to see him nail his dick to a board. <laughs> Let's just you got to come up with a better way to sell a bike than Facebook Marketplace. Okay. <laughs> because that's the, that's the plan. right now, one, there's a whole bunch of shit that's not really ready for bring, bring a trailer. Yeah. I don't know if you guys have ever put anything on bring a trailer. The payoff is pretty fucking high. Huh. But the standards are pretty fucking high, too. Yeah. You can't list... A 150 with a bent frame. He's not bring talking a about the Facebook group. Right. Oh, I <laughs> <laughs> bring your trailer actual. All right. But 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 here's the jam. At the moment, Facebook Marketplace somehow accidentally killed Craigslist. Yeah, right. And it also apparently accidentally killed eBay. Because I checked. And I list Cycle Trader, which is just fucking Cycle Trader, which is just evil. literally you type in the name of the motorcycle you want to buy. And, it doesn't and after you. 97 ads yep. that are premium sponsored ads for not the motorcycle you want to buy, right. you'll eventually start seeing the motorcycle that you want to buy. And it, but the premium sponsored ads of that 
which are usually either unobtainium or dealer bikes that have like a $1,600 destination fee, or dock worse fee, than whatever. That, right. yeah. You find one that you're like, fuck yeah, I want this bike. Right. And it was like listed 29 months ago. Yes. Yeah. And you're like, what the fuck, dude? Right. It's, this right. guy doesn't even, he's not even alive anymore. No. <laughs> like, no. <laughs> and because very, almost none of those listings are by humans. No. They're, I'm sorry. By uh, owners. They're all by. Oh, there we go. Oh, 13. Oh my God! Thirteen thousand five hundred dollars for a VBB with List, a side car. Listed two days ago. Is that on Bring a Trailer? Uh huh. Tom. Hey. Well, guess where we're going next, baby? I told you. <laughs> Look, you it's told got, me. I it, told you. I, I never, told it's got the, you. It's got, I told you about the. Floor oh, is that a bars? tall? Is that a tall windshield? The tall. Well, uh, it doesn't have the tall windshield, but it does have all the chrome. Oh, okay, whatever. Uh-huh. We're not putting chrome on this shit. <laughs> Hey, we're gonna make go, a video of hey, it starting in the first. On, fucking click button. on that and see if the uh, see if the uh, spare tire has Vesper on it. It's spray right, written on, on the it. back. Yeah. Um, what we're looking at is bring a trailer listing for a Vespa. We call them these Nomers. They're straight from Vietnam, and it is it's it's pretty, but it's it's all fucked up and wrong in a hundred different ways. Mm-hmm. Why do Bajas always paint it green? Thousand fucking dollars. Two days in. Yeah. Yeah. They always For a 19... By the way, it's not a 1960. It's not remotely a 1960. It's completely a fake bike. Yeah. It is a fake Vespa. It's never been to Italy. It's just a fake fucking bike. It's not any of the things it claims to be. It's just a fake but the, fucking but the bike. The best part is yeah. you... I mean, I, I guarantee you half the comments that are on this right now are people that we know... Right, because they know. didn't even bother putting an airbox cover on it, and oh, you can see the Indian the LML, LML it's got fucking the LML blue. Yeah, blue air filter in it. But where do they get that freaking P125 uh, fakey flywheel with the with the rubber? Because I don't even think they do that anymore. They don't. Is that a Dan motor? That's a yeah. No, that's uh, uh, no, no. That's that's just fucking. <laughs> they didn't even put a it's selector a fire box ball. cover on it. What's funny is there's so much attention to detail in putting like a headlight in oh, the yeah. sidecar right. and like upholstering shit that shouldn't be upholstered. But yet it doesn't have an airbox cover. It's a 150. That it actually <laughs> needs for it to run, and it doesn't have a selector box cover. Yeah. Yeah. There's okay. Sure. Oh wow, they absolutely stamped it. Oh, you just know that's like- a VBB with the uh, very desirable 10 inch wheel. Yeah. Connect, conversion kit well, yeah right yeah sure that's all fake at least it but this is my point wait, wait. this is another point this is another point no that is a fake bike that's well, all it is match. what's the, that the oh no they never match they're okay. not supposed to match yeah okay if you bring me a bike and the numbers match i know you faked it okay yeah. i'm not an in expert. fact that's a hundred percent fucking guarantee that you faked it gotcha. because nobody at vespa was like Luigi. It says Vespa on the cover of right. the spare tire. Yeah, the spare tire. That's exactly it. That's the Vespa. That's the cover. The Vespa. That is the, yeah, the Vespa. Yeah. It is. It is spray painted. I'm it not even spray kidding. Painted spray painted on the back. vinyl. Yeah, right. But you see the way it looks like an E and then an R at the end instead of an actual A. Oh yeah. I, I think right. the last one of these I sold for three hundred dollars at just Barber. Garbage. <laughs> That's all just trash. Oh, it's got the LML knockoff. It's got a fake or the uh, yeah, JL the knockoff. fake JL knockoff exhaust. <laughs> so but what the, happens when this fucking guy gets this bike for thirteen thousand dollars and it fucking falls apart? Then he does. Then he does. He contacts his local state attorney general's office. Oh wait, I'm sorry. If he's smart, he contacts his state local state attorney general's office. He says, "I believe I've been involved in a scam. Mm. I purchased something that was sold to me as being a vintage Vespa collector scooter. And after consulting certain experts, I find out that it's not in fact a Vespa scooter. And I find out that it was sold to me with a title that is not for what it is. The bike that came into our shop recently that was well over $5,000 paid had a title that said it was a 1961 Vespa bike, which we know it wasn't, Hmm. that it was fictitious. So that's fraudulent. So then you go to the AG's office and you file a criminal complaint with the attorney general's office against the person that sold it to you. Mm. And if your case is good enough and anybody fucking cares, you might get some action. But usually what's going to happen is the AG is going to call the person that son- sold it to you and threaten them. How much do you think that Swiss custom chopper oh, costs brand new? Because they're only getting 4500 for oh, it. Oh, no. <laughs> at a zero at least. So They paid 50000 and now they're <gasps> getting forty five probably. Oh, yeah. Hey, no, just I've, buy a Honda Fury because those are twelve grand oh, brand new. And every Fury I've ever seen on Craigslist or Cycle Trader or whatever is about forty five fifty five hundred dollars So So getting back to this, yeah. there's, of course, a long line of comments of course there are that have been 
redacted of because they are not constructive because no. they're calling it out for the bullshit that yeah, it is. Exactly. Christmas because, special sold for 9200 Yeah, those are... Hence why we're saying bring yeah. a trailer if you want to sell something and you're willing to go through the motions. Yeah. You will find your fat, white, male buyer oh, yeah. on bring a trailer. And not only is it bring a trailer, it's bring a wallet. There's a sucker right. born every minute and oh they love to bid God. on bring and a trailer. All on bring a trailer. Which is why this is just a license to print fucking oh, yeah. money. Um... And apparently, the shadier the better, mm. right? It's the golden one. It's like the yeah, the, it's like the bikes that were on Mika are right. now on bring a trailer oh, for even are. more. Absolutely. <laughs> well, or because Mika has seller's fees, buyer's fees, yeah. right? And bring a trailer is a little more friendly place to buy a bike or a little less actionable legally. Right, yeah. because they're not an auction house that's supposed to be standing behind. Oh my the thing god! That's a 2001 fucking GSXR 1000 sold for f- almost fourteen thousand two hundred twenty-two dollars. Oh. Don't ever do a deep dive on Bring a Trailer. It will make you very sad. Do you know how many of those I saw get thrown down the highway? Oh my god! Yeah, but, but but the whole idea behind Bring a Trailer is literally it had two hundred ninety-one miles on it. Yeah. Nineteen thousand seven hundred and fifty for a shitty sixty-six Sprint with a sidecar, same setup. All it's right. a sixty-six Sprint. It's not a sixty-six Sprint. It's a Bajaj. <laughs> All right, let's right. Uh, Don yeah. stop looking at that. Right. Three stop hours. looking at that. It's making everybody mad. Oh, Come on. God. It's making no, our podcast it's, too long. No, it's making me think if they're going to be this many suckers, I am painting the I'm Bondo and painting shit all all next Look, year. Look, we <laughs> used to go to Barber to find rich people to buy our shit. I know. And now they don't want to pay they for come anything. To us. Now we got to go to that, yeah. right? Now and we got to go there. The best part about right. it, I, and I'll leave this this and we should probably close out because yeah, it's should. way but too long. What yeah. I'm saying is why this works though is why? that 90% of the people buying this are not motorcyclists. They're they're rich fucks with collectors. Caves yeah, well, yeah. That they don't give a fuck. They want a pretty fucking Sleepy. bike. Sleepy. Their Sleepy. money's green, right? Dan, how yeah, many motorcycles right. you bought in the past five years, give or take? Um, uh, jeez, three, four, four. How many motorcycles you bought in the past five years? No. Within five. Twenty. Okay, Mecklefresh. How many bikes you bought in the past five years? Mm, maybe ten. Okay. Think about that. Now, how many bikes you bought on Bring a Trailer? Zero. Oh, yeah. zero. zero, 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 zero. So does is zero tr- is bring a trailer a threat to any of us? No, but it. it well, I mean, if I ever want to buy, were a we going to buy any of these bikes that are on here? No, no, we weren't. Now, are we taking advantage of bring a trailer? No, but this. No, we're not. No, but we're sh- not taking we advantage. But this. But we should be. Yeah, right. we should be. But the problem is, is that every. Why fucking- am I sucking dick at Mid Ohio to old men yeah. that want to tell me stories about bikes they used to see in the parking lot where they used to work when I should be selling that shit on Bring a Fucking Trailer? Right. Because I could sell all of my stupid shit on Bring a Trailer, God. apparently for good money. Now we're if- st- we're gonna stay. We're gonna we're gonna get that white sidecar. We're gonna stick it on your GS. To the moon. We're going to send it to the moon. All I'm no, saying is... No, you don't sell the GS because the GS is actually worth money. Not true. You put it on a fucking piece of shit leftover Bajaj. I got two of those, actually. Or one of the Sportiques in the back that nobody That's wants to true. buy. You don't actually put it on something worth something. No. <laughs> to don't the moon. do that. You put it on some horrible piece of shit nobody wants. You did see the Namer that came into our That's shop. True. The guy paid five grand for. That's true, and he was holding for five when he when you got him too. I found him a buyer. This guy bought a bike on <clears throat> eBay, a fucking straight up. Look how red it is, and the white walls are so white, right? Pipe paid five thousand dollars for a bike that couldn't run under its own power. Oh yeah, right. I a tried. fake, a fakey, fake, fake bike. And I found him a restaurant owner that was like, I will put that in my restaurant and and women, scantily clad women are going to take Instagram pictures on that shit all night long because I have an Italian themed restaurant and I want that to just be somewhere people can take pictures with the name of my restaurant in the background. Win for everybody. I'll give you $2,000. And the dude was like, nah. Nah. He's going to enjoy his bike. Nah. He wants to look at it in his garage. Yep. That's what he wants to be. <laughs> yeah. But that's the point is like, look, you lost 5K. I'm going to give you a way to get 2K back. Right. Then you're out only 3K. <clears throat> What's better, 2,000 or zero? Right. That's a hard exactly. that's math. That's more math than I can do. But, but I but, think 2,000 is probably better. If you were panning through this right now and I saw that particular red bike with those particular white wall tires and it was listed for $5,000, I wouldn't be surprised. 
Because he probably knows about Bring a Trailer, too. Oh, yeah. I might have to throw my CB on there. Hey, yeah. There's a CBX new in the box. An, an in the box CBX? Well, the box, oh. in the box, it's more Somebody, like parts of all the box. All right, now I'm mad. Uh, it looks like an 81, though. It looks late. It but is an 81. It looks like a Euro. It but looks, is this yeah. the one where, like, they also didn't say that the fucking uh, battery leaked acid all over it and ate half the fucking paint and everything on it? Like, there's that one. So, gonna, is there, is there I'll still one. take it. Yeah. There's a there's a there's an eighty two Mike Halewood replica that is bid to twelve seven. That fucking Vespa is worth is going for more. I fucking <laughs> promise you. Bring a trailer is seriously. Pour a strong drink. Pour yourself oh, a strong God. fucking drink and and then spend an hour looking at Bring a Trailer. <laughs> and if you if, and if you're like Look at the juice but, dripping on the side. But of the I don't. Oh, no kidding. Right. But I don't know about cars and motorcycles and shit. Oh yeah, the br- the front brake is let go. The front brake is let go and dumped all of its brake fluid on the paint. Yep. So the paint on that bike is gone on the right side of the gas tank and on the rifle fairing. I know. It's okay. <laughs> hey, John, that bike is only six carburetor rebuilds. Yep. Sure. Away from being running. Oh, well, they already they uncrated it. Oh, they did no, uncrate no, it. Oh, they put it. Th- no, no, that's what it should, should look that's like. That's what it should look like. That's Except what it should look like. Except for the paint's not going like. to look like that. No, the paint's not going to look like that because it's already. She had rats chew on the wiring harness. Yeah. No, that's G-like. Yeah, that's yeah, that's just CBX shit. Uh, hey, you know yeah. what? Here's the thing. I'll tell you guys. We last week we had a podcast talking about the bike that got away. Do you yep. guys notice I didn't say a single thing about CBXs? Right. And I've owned two of them. I have never well, wanted. They didn't get away if you already owned two of them. But right. I never wanted to have them back. Right. And I've never at anywhere been like oh, CBX. I'll pay it. I'll pay the money. I got to have it. No, because you know what? It wasn't great. Mm-hmm. Our CB1100 that we all rode around and said, well, that was boring, had more of everything than the ZBX had. Phil, yeah. the $15,000 Mint CBX, yeah. is it faster than a 1998, or no, I'm sorry, n- 2000 F2 any no. CBR 600 yeah, no. Exactly. Say, it's no it's not right right so it's, it's does slower it, than every does, F4 does it, it handles worse better? than every F4 <laughs> it it does everything worse than every F4 ever right so if you have an F4 You're, it's better than any CBX ever produced that's my point Exactly. It's faster. It handles better. It's it's does all right. the things better. And here's the thing. I yeah. think vintage guys yeah. just need to accept the fact that you just like the bike. You have a nostalgic connection it to right. it, whatever. That's it. Because like when you get to these forums, these guys are like, you new guys couldn't handle the fucking H2 or my fucking right. CB. It's like, no, we couldn't because it's a pile of shit, dude. Right. <laughs> like, I'm not saying you can't like it. It's not a beautiful thing. And it's not this one. It sounds a CBX on full tilt with a set of pipes. I mean, it, it, I get drips. I'm not going to lie. But... <laughs> it doesn't compare to fucking modern bikes. You can buy a 1980s Rolls Royce right now for five thousand dollars. Right, but each wheel caliper costs three thousand dollars. Right. Yep. So you can own it for five k if you want it to be parked in your front yard. But if you want to drive it and do anything like to it, drive it and enjoy it, each wheel caliper. Just I just did a little basic shopping because I was curious about buying one. That just a wheel caliper. One wheel caliper costs three thousand dollars. You know what's weird? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I just imagine you buying a Rolls Royce, but the thing is, <laughs> yeah. is you probably have an outfit for it. Like you, <laughs> you probably have like some English fucking guy <laughs> oh, fuck with that. a tie and like a fucking <laughs> thing, like because you always have like you'll be going to something and like you'll show up and you're like holy fuck, like somehow you have the perfect fucking outfit. I have know, a like, different pair fez. of boots for every motorcycle I own. Yeah, right, right. I promise you that. I do have I a different I know that you have boots. cars that require right. fezzes. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, that's fucking true. Yeah, I'm not... Uh, yeah, that's cool. And I believe that if you have a good motorcycle, there should be a supplemental outfit that goes with that's it. That's right. Right. Yeah, oh, yeah I that's think that's it. it, right? All right, so all on right. that, the world's dumbest, longest podcast, yeah. I think we should all remember to ride fast and take chances. Play us out of here, Johnny Mac. Bum 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 b